All right, we're good. Be like, uh, busting with the boys. Bussin' with the boys. Bro. Uh, what episode is this, Mitch? 288. Two, episode 288. Welcome back. If we have Detroit Lions fans in here, we have a special, special episode for you today. But you know what's even special to us, near and dear to our hearts? That is the one and only Chevy Silverado. Do you pre- we are presented by the Chevy Silverado. There's a good reason. Wait. Oh. It's a new ad. Okay, I'm rattled. I'm rattled. I'm rattled. <laughs> it's a new ad. Stay in it. Stay in it. Stay in it. All right, it. here we go. You're good. There's a reason we've never done a tear talk of best pickup trucks. That's because for, for busting with the boys, there's only one pickup truck, the Chevy Silverado. Yes, sir. Ask the, say that part. Why is that? Silverado is a partner, a partner you can depend on. We've spent all time driving and using the Silverado for all kinds of adventures and other shenanigans. Silverado was a partner with us on spring tour and we'll be again for the fall tour silverado brings the grit to legendary grit paired with modern truck tech inside and out massive screens up to eight cameras with 14 different views to help make driving towing and parking all easier four different powertrain choices and the available multi-flex tailgate so you can work and play smarter God, not harder dirty to me there's a reason chevy is america's <clears throat> most award brand a most awarded brand for new vehicles qualify, quality over the last three years, according to J.D. Power. So head over to Chevy.com, build your Silverado, and check out the current offers on Silverado. Discover a world of strength and capability, all behind the wheel of our favorite truck, the Chevy Silverado. Chevy, Chevrolet received the highest total number of awards compared to all brands in the J.D. Power 2022 through 2024 U.S. initial quality studies. Visit jdpower.com forward slash awards for more details. Awards based on 2022 through 2024 models. Threw me through a loop there. Threw me through a loop. If you want to get the best one, get the ZR2 in black. Yeah, your vehicle is nice. Three words that come to mind when you see my vehicle. Sex appeal. Hyphenated. (laughs) Gritty. Dependable. We're back. We're back in the saddle. Uh, as always. We have a great intro lined up. We're going to talk summer games. We're going to talk what... Taylor and I are going to build out a draft for the, what, 4 by one high jump, 50-meter freestyle. Fencing, fencing, rifling, and shot put. And shot put. Now, there is a lot of back and forth, what you can say and what you can't say about what's going on in Paris right now while people run, jump, skip, grab a pole, go into the air play some badminton, some three-on-three basketball, or some say three-by-three basketball. There's a lot of stuff going on about trademarks. So we're going to do our best to navigate those waters for you guys right now. But I hope you understand what we're talking about. Is that fair to say? Can we say that? I I believe so. Jack? We'll have Jack jump in at any moment. Would I have gotten dinged there? You said what exactly? He said Paris, but I think Paris is okay. Paris is okay. It's just a city. I mean, I'm Paris is just a, it's just love a city. Paris. Did, you, did, did you read the, love the Paris shoot I sent you? I saw it. I did, glanced at it. So you did I not, did not see, see Paris. So just so time out, we can time out and we can quit. Hey, we're going to take a time. We're going to respect the timeout. We're going to take the time out. So there's trademark. Do you have the trademark? I see Paris? that. But okay. at the very bottom, there's a, there's an extra behind it. We're talking about Paris in Europe. We're talking, okay. Oh yeah. You can just we're talking say about Paris, France the location. Yeah. Paris. There's, there's yeah. things going on in Paris, France right now. Competitions of sort. Mm-hmm. That's all we're saying. Good. And because of that, we had a nice brainstorm with the boys in the back. Garrett came up with this phenomenal idea. We are going to do the draft that Will just spoke of. I'm not going to repeat it because that would be redundant. Boom. Speaking of France, I believe uh, the U.S. dogged them in, in women's volleyball indoor yesterday. I don't know if you can say that. Why Why not? I, I can say <laughs> I that. I don't know what trade is trademarked. No, no, no. I can say that. But the U.S. dogged them the US. in the U.S. in the, the main event. The thing we all think about when we think about those games. The four by one, 100. The one, no, the, the, 100, the 100. The 100 yes, meter. Yes, yes. And his name was? Noah Lyles. Noah and Lyles. Frank, not white, Frank. Whitecheck. 
the Kersley? Medalist. Frank yeah. Kersley? Curly. Curly. Damn God, it. This damn is it. a great sports podcast. This is a great sports podcast. We took home the gold and bronze, and it's the first time in, what, 20 years that the USA year has drought. brought it back? 20-year right. yeah. drought because Jamaica absolutely dummies us in the 100-meter dash. Yeah, that's mostly Usain Bolt. I'll say this, dude. You can say whatever you want about our economy Fred, right now. Frank. Our economy, the war possibly pending, looming, you know, the, sh the shootings and all that, but we're the best. Yeah, you can claim the fastest country in the world. I think that's the most that's the most pride that everybody right. that everybody takes. Of all the things you want your cat your country to be categorized as, fastest is number one. Yes. And also sand volleyball. Don't sleep on sand volleyball. I believe the the US we're still battling. Navigate those waters also. What? So you got a wife at home, sand volleyball is a scary sport to have on the television. We both watch it together. Do you guys? Yeah. And she has no idea. I say, look at those breeders. <laughs> you say it. No, no, I don't say that. I Truly, it, though, I think it. You think it? I think it. Think it out loud. Hey, we might not be the best, though. What do you mean? China's got us right no, now. No, but we know that. See the way this is categorized. It's In going gold. off of gold medals, but look at the total medals. We're dumbing them right We're now. Dumbing. Seventy-five. So there's oh, it's a numbers game. De -de 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 -de. It's a numbers game. You can always find a way to say that you're the best, and we have the most medals. Where I was most saddened. Uh oh. Was that in the, uh, which I love the whole mixed relays, two guys, two girls, the four by four, uh, the U S set a world record in the semis and then ended up losing, getting hawked by this chick from the Netherlands. She was in fifth place. That's right. And I know we can't show it on the screen, but if you could even just bring up that last moment. So that way Taylor can see what happened Yeah, or just show me a picture. No, no, no. You got to see the last 200 meters, bro. That's the picture right there. This chick from the Netherlands just hawks. She runs like a 47 second split, which that is incredible. Finky Bull. What's and if you get a moment to hear her post run interview, oh, the best. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, for real? You can't prepare for what her voice sounds like, but Mitch already ruined it for you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mitch does that. Yeah. Mitch bought me yesterday but, too. Dude, it voice. was, uh, I was watching that live and it was insane because I want to say the world record was like, what was it uh three, three? Yeah, three. It was just three. Three oh seven. Like low, ahead. like low three oh seven. Oh wow, you were on the mark. Yeah, and both USA and Netherlands ran in the three oh seven mark, but this chick just hawked. Um, I forget the gal's name. Who's nineteen? Who was anchoring for the US? That's the name you guys just said. That sounds like Mickey Mouse. The chick, from the, girl. the chick from girl. the Netherlands is the one that sounds like Mickey Got Mouse. Got you. Am I correct in assuming, I think I saw a clip of this, USA kind of started slowing it down towards the end? Or was it a in true hawk? In that 4x4? Four four? Yeah. No, it was a true hawk. This is a different one. Because uh, the girl that anchored, she ran a 49 split. Like, she ran really well. And again, they, they ran at 307. It just wasn't the world record time they put up the day before. And this chick from the Netherlands, bro, just out of nowhere. You saw it, JP? The, the nether when i was working at img the netherlands track and field team came to train there and they pound for pound have to be like the most elite looking country of all time every single guy was jacked and handsome every single girl was ripped and good looking and it would just to like watch them hit their workout and then hit the track was it was it was incredible it didn't shock me at all that yeah they they're producing something like that yeah. Yeah. You know how JP was sitting there watching that practice go down too. I mind if I work in with you? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. Pin it up against the uh, waistband. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it is wild seeing these people and these events taking place in Paris and knowing that they took four years just to get to this point. Yeah. And all the pressure. Like when you watch the uh, 100 meter yesterday, those guys just trying to qualify, working their ass off. And like the guys that don't qualify, it's like, all right, hey, how get back to the village and get yours, I guess. No, Lyle's almost didn't qualify. Right, because he, he saw a buddy who ended up, he ended up edging out in the final, right? Was that the same guy? Same. Staring him down at the finish line. Yeah. And it was like close. But it felt like no, uh, no, when he crossed the finish line in the semis, he was like, it seemed like he had a look back that was really confident too. Like, yo, I, I was coming. Like, I'm yeah, coming. Like, I'm, I'm just kind of warming up. You know why he did that? No. Do you know why? For a better, for a better. No, the reason. Lane? The reason Noah Lyles did that at, in the semifinals was because in the World Champions, the Jamaican guy did it to him, 
and like beat him and like Ooh. wait the Good dream guy contest. beat him in the semis in the world did, championship no. in the worlds or was it the final yeah, yeah. The when that guy the, beat him in the worlds, he like was looking at him the same way you're saying no yeah. was looking at him right in the semis. I love that, bro. That 100 meter. I mean, yes, very recent bias right here, but We're maybe best? the most exciting 100 meter dash of all time. No, <laughs> I think it's safe to say, I think you think without looking into it at all. Well, yeah, yeah, I, but I'm saying competitively. You're like, watching great with you saying bolt. You're watching greatness. You're like, I can't believe this is the fastest man to ever live. You're sitting there. We're like, okay, what kind of world record he's going to break? Knowing nobody's really going to beat him. No, it's this touching. one. The difference between first and second was what? Five thousandths yeah. of a second. And some people still debate like, yo, I don't even know if he actually won. Yada, yada, yada. That's how close it was. And every guy was right there. The difference between first and last place, I think was like a body length was similar to first and last place was similar to the finals of the women's 100 on first and second place. I follow most of that. So, okay. I think I I, I got that down. Yeah, I think you I said you, you sounded Because Shikari good. Richardson was supposed to, was the favorite to win in the women's 100. No Jamaican was anywhere in sight. She was looked to win, but the St. Lucia chick took home the first medal ever for her country and it happened to be a gold medal in the female's 100. Fastest woman in the world. That's and awesome. beat her by a body length. And that's basically the difference between first and last in that 100 meter men's. I mean, First it was last? nuts. Yeah. Okay. But hey, go back to that photo. I have a question we can't for show you, the too. Photo. We can't show the photo. We can't show the photo. Yeah, we can't show the photo that we're looking at right now, but with the photo we're I mean, look at, at that finish, finish, bro. This is and no you're Lyles. saying the guy that got in last place, this guy right here. Yeah, this one right here. This is photo the, finish. Is the distance that chick who won the first medal for her country ever yes. won by. So what do y'all think? Because the Jamaican dude, his foot his, crossed yeah. first. But they go by torso. Yeah. Do y'all like that rule or no? Yeah. Because yeah, USA right won. Yeah. We're, we're with Team right. USA. If the, sh if the yeah. shoe's on the other foot, it'd be ridiculous. <laughs> if you were racing Will and it came down to that, what would you say? That's different. It's, yeah. I'm voting for myself. Right. Taylor's voting for himself. Right. If it's that well, close to, we got to talk to Will about his speed because I'm a, I'm a broken man. <laughs> I do see what you're saying. Like I understand the controversy because it's his the first. If you go by first body part, the Jamaican takes it. Yeah. If you go by torso. Obviously, USA gets it. This is a this is a great argument for the world. Yeah. And because we are geographically where we are, this was called correctly. Hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. No doubt about it. And uh, just like the Music City Miracle was for sure a backwards pass. How uh, how what was the difference between first and fourth place? Like not meddling. Because that photo finish was essentially four guys, which is brutal, man. Same time. Seven nine seven nine eight one. What about the and announcer that just like was losing his mind for uh, just just Jamaica. straight up was like in the Jamaicans won it. Like you gotta say like. What a photo finish. We got to check this out. Right. Like, you can't just assume. Biased. Homer. Yeah. Homer. Yeah. Didn't sound like, I mean. Yeah, right. Yeah. But if he was going for the American guy, people would what be, I thought would, be like, hey, how I, about that announcer, huh? What I thought was man. cool, too, is they all had to stand there for a moment and just look at the board because nobody knew what happened. And you see uh, Noah's mom, too, reacting. Just an incredible moment for the U.S. Also, the guy who they thought won, he's like, come on, man, come on. Like, looking up, like, hoping for the official time. Yeah. And Noah Lyles beforehand, a lot of people were like, you can tell he's one of those athletes who could get under other people's skin because on, like, the world stage of these games, it's about nice. class and, like, all, all of the moment that's led up to. And so you kind of put him in this box and he's like, oh, he's that kind of guy. But you watch him and he goes up behind the dude and he's like, puts his arm on him. And, like, you can tell he's like, He's like, good job, dude. And then immediately they're like, Noah Lyles wins gold. And then he's like, takes Just off his banner. Up. Yeah. Like, you almost don't know what to do because his best event too is the 200. Because that's kind of like the, the the mission he took on, right? He was like, let me see if I can win the 100. Because he wasn't even a 100 cat. Yeah. Based on, what, what's that show on Netflix? Uh, I think it's, isn't it called Sprint? Sprint. Yes. But yes. also, what do you think? Because in the, maybe it were in the world championships was happening he was saying that the average person is closer to LeBron James than they are to him. They were saying that the closest person. This is what Noah Lyles was saying. You're Noah like, Lyles. like I'm closer to LeBron than I am to, to Noah Lyles because he's run the 
whatever it was, the fifth fat. He's the fifth fastest man to ever live. Yeah. In speed? I disagree. I don't understand. What He's the, saying that athletically, Noah, Noah Lyles is saying like the average person is closer to LeBron James than they are to Noah Lyles. Kind of like that. I, I kind of right? like. You do and love to go win it. Like, like what Jack was talking about, how like uh, Noah Lyles has been like portrayed as like a villain in these sports. Like you always want if it's your villain, you're like that's our fucking guy. We want him a little cocky. We want him a little confident, yeah. and let the rest of the world hate this dude. Right. Because you know the next world, which is in two years, right? Because yeah. it goes to increments of two. When he goes, everyone, everybody is going to be like, fuck Noah Lyles. But all of us are going to be sitting there being like, that's our dog. And I bet yeah. the NBA players were a little bit sick because he was like, for the NBA finals, he's like, why do they call themselves world champions? That was all him you, who said that? Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> funny. I like it. Hey, to answer Will's question from earlier, the sixth place finisher in that final was one tenth of a second from first place. The Which sixth is nuts. Place guy. Which is nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. Hey, hey and you know, I, I tweeted about it last night, but you know that graphic of the photo finish is going to be used all across the country from uh, from coaches. Just oh, being like, yeah. this is the difference. Yeah. Yeah. This is why we work you guys. 1% better. 1%. This is the difference between Pulls gold up. and silver. He's going to show some kid let off yeah. when he could have made a tackle. They're going to show the Larry not touch, Fitzgerald not, clip. Not touching the in, line. Uh, in the Super Bowl in 2007 when, uh, was it Harris? Harrison? Yeah, when he caught, caught the that pick, interception was going to the house. And he hawks him down. He goes, if he would have just ran a little bit harder, he would have saved that touchdown. This is that. Mm -hmm. Damn. Kind of gets you fired up, it huh? does. Kind of gets you juiced going. Um, what do we want to get into, boys? What do we want to talk about? Women's boxing? Go ahead. You go ahead and do that. <laughs> That's Will. Will Compton, ladies and gentlemen, on women's boxing. No, yeah. So the championship. When does the championship take place? The, fe tomorrow. the female XY championship? I mean, ultimately, that, that seems to be the consensus of what has happened. People are in, a, in an absolute uproar about, is this chick a male? Is she a female? From what I have read, reserve the right to change my mind, but from what I have read article-wise, it seems like this Algerian boxer was born biologically a female, had a little uh, mix in her cocktail, developed a, an XY chromosome over time, no PP, no wiener. But people are saying that she's either trans or a male. And so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, um, what's the word? There's a lot of friction out there. There's mm -hmm. a lot of hate happening online on this saying that she shouldn't be allowed to box and same with the, the, uh, the, the Chinese chick, right? She's from China. Yeah. Kind of the same situation. Both of them who were apparently born female developed the XY chromosome over time. They're saying their test levels like they shouldn't be allowed to compete in the Olympics because I believe that they are banned from other leagues. So why would they not be banned from the Olympics? And why do the Olympics say they could do it if they've been banned from other leagues? I, I, ultimately, it seems like a uh, like one of those the issues with the system, right? Because based on the Olympics, it seems like that. What is it? The IBA, IOC, the IOC allows that, and I think people are pissed that they allow that. But then you got you got the you got the strong right who says no that 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 is a male. Mm. When ultimately you sit back and you understand that we could solve this problem fairly quickly. How's that? Depends. <laughs> yeah, it could depends, but there's a whole surgery thing. I think you you would. So she was born easily be able to see that she was born with a vagina. Yes. And then we'll just say around three years old, a little pee pee started coming out. I don't think this so. This is not. No, 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 this no. Is, this is okay. So medically, she is a hermaphrodite. And so the doctor, okay. when you are born, you have two sexual organs, but she has I love a, how Jack's getting politically a sack. Up, politically correct. And, well, you know, I, and I mean, a this vagina, is. But the doctor has the official like clearance to decide what is more of a sexually developed organ. And she was at birth a female but she had a testicular sac so she will have more higher levels of testosterone than any other woman but there was no surgery involved she didn't like grow a penis at three or anything like that but she's technically a hermaphrodite and not a transgender so okay. that's i thought it was like a shallow is. house situation when the guy had the little tail and it kind of just <laughs> developed you know what i'm saying yeah right hey but jack that was very well said very well said. Honestly, in the entirety of this whole thing, 
I feel bad for those boxers who have to experience all of this hate because you can only assume that she's obviously, they, everybody's worked their entire lives for this moment, <laughs> the shallow hell, God, <laughs> the shallow hell moment. Everybody's worked their entire lives for this moment. And then to be the focus of it, be on everybody else's hate on the matter, I think sucks for those fighters because it, they're obviously working just as hard and they want to compete and they want to participate just like everybody else does. And just the human being portion of it, take the, take the fighter out. It's like all you're a woman and everyone's like, no, you're a dude. Right. You're a guy. And it's like, hey, listen, I'm I'm doing my best to tell you. I'm a you woman. should not be allowed. And it's like, I mean, I want to box. I, so I literally don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Like, that's hard. That's a hard deal. And this event takes place tomorrow at 3.02 p.m. And the uproar started because of the Italian boxer quit in the first round. Which uh, you were saying you had some words about that, which I don't disagree with. Yeah, I was more so. She's like chalking it up. She got hit a couple times. She said it was the hardest she's ever been hit, which in my opinion, it's like, yo, you're sparring all the time. I'm sure you get hit way harder. And it's like boxing, right? Like, yes, you're going to get hit in the mouth. You knew going into that fight that you were boxing, that you were boxing uh, that Algerian chick. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you knew you were going to, in my head, you were going to take that moment to back out right when it felt uncomfortable for you. It's like, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to see if I can win. But the moment I get hit in the face and it's like, okay, this chick is handling me. I'm just going to wave my hands and quit. Like to me, that's where I had the problem. It's like, if you knew, to me, it was premeditated. You knew you were going to back out and do that or you had those doubts You weren't 100% in. in. Yeah, you weren't 100% bought yeah. in. I'm with you on that. So that was like my whole qualm about and it. And it goes back to you talking about you're working your entire life for this. And you have an, everybody's got a puncher's chance when you get into these opportunities. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, maybe she's got more testosterone. Maybe there's a whole bunch of stuff going on with the hermaphrodite stuff. But at the end of the day, like you're it's just you two in the ring. And you might as well see the end of it. And you understood all of this like going in. And so when you're training, right. it's if you're literally... Gonna, if you're going to quit, quit before. Right. And you know as a competitor, but while you're training and getting into the trenches of it all, you're mindset is nothing is going to stand in the way between me and that gold medal or me and that podium. So it's like, that is the example of that. And then you made it about something completely out of turn by allowing the world to blow up the way that they blew up, blew up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. On I know the Italian stallion Rocky about boy. I kind of did write about that. He would not have went out like that. David Goggins wouldn't either. No, no, no. Can't I mean, that. you know, we're, we're out there playing, you know, I, I'm out there with T levels of like below 300, my NFL career with guys that are sitting around a thousand. I was right there with you. You think I want to throw my face in a 330 pound all pro guard and go stiff? Where was I the next series? On the field. On the field. No question. Did it hurt? Yes. Was it one of the hardest you've ever been hit in your life? Did he say night, night, motherfucker? <laughs> Could you get up at one point? I tried, but no, I couldn't. You couldn't because your body was <laughs> stiff. Stiff. And therefore, couldn't do it, but <laughs> shook it off. What'd you do? Got back out there. No question. Coach, I'm ready to go. Are you sure? Right. Yes. I don't right. know if you are. You're just a real man. That, that was my point. All right. That was my point. All right. Onward. <laughs> oh, yeah. Onward and upward. You sung a pup punk. Yeah, I did. I was waiting for you to bring that up. It was going to feel weird for me not to bring it up myself, but it was a big opportunity. They called. PFT is like, hey, would you want to sing one with us? I said, absolutely. And uh, first time being on stage without a drink in me at all. Very nervous before I went up. Very nervous. Hit the mark part. And, and you do, you have spoken before. If you could live another life, you would love to be a musician. And? An artist. A performer. Uh, Blink-182, lead singer. What else? If you were going to say, I thought you were going to lead into, that wasn't bad, Taylor. That was pretty good, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no It doubt, was pretty no good, right? Yeah. Like, you look at this, and you hear how I'm talking right now, and you think, there's no way that guy can sing. But then we get on stage, and it's not bad. Like, hey, maybe he should dabble in this arena. Yeah. And was a text sent out to Ernest later that night? No question. Like, hey, hear me out. Let's start a band. Yeah. I'll be the front man. You just do all of the hard work, the writing, the guitar, everything. And let me just be the front man for our band. What was the most nerve wracking part? Like, what were you thinking about that made it so nerve wracking? Just it was it going to be your style? Like once you got into it and singing, like how am well, I going to it's, it's be a showman? I did. Uh, I fell. I almost fell because I, the stage was so small and there were so many people on there. And I went to do the, I miss you part, but I went to give it to somebody in the crowd and the speaker was right in front of my foot and I tripped and I had to like 
bring my foot back to catch it. And then Roan grabs my back. It was, so there was, we're a little all over the place the entire time, but the nerve, the nervous part was just, you know, you're going on stage and there's a whole bunch of people and you want to sound somewhat good. And then I started seeing the Mark part, the hello there. And that we, sure. we talked about this yesterday. It's like a baritone type of thing. That's the harder part. And in my opinion. the once I said hello there, I could hear myself and go, ah, this is really bad. I got to get to, I got to get to the Tom part. I got to get to the Tom part. <laughs> just absolutely grunted my way through that situation. Ended up getting to Tom and I was like, we got to go essentially maximum effort in the situation. Dude, I and love And just it. let it go. Let's check out a couple of reviews. We have Cam Belden. Can Taylor please never sing again? Just awful. Yeah. Well, Cam obviously is not cultured in the, uh, in the scene. <laughs> He's a hater. He's a hater. He's a hater, bro. Which is, just fuels me more. Yeah. Fuels me more. You got to get back out there. And I've said this. Room I've, for improvement. I, room for improvement. I've actually sang on this bus before. Kit Moore, the country singer, talented individual. I can do a better Kit Moore than Kit Moore. Whoa. Nice. Let's hear it. I, you've heard it. I've actually seen it. To, let's do it again. We got new listeners. We got new listeners. People love, from Detroit tuned in. I would in. love to do that. They can go back and find it. But I remember last time I did it, the look on your face of discomfort for your own self being in the situation. I think I would be excited. It was very difficult for me to watch it and have to relive that for you. I think the because stage it's is just, set. If we're doing acapella, we're sitting here on this bus, it's going to be more difficult given a stage, maybe an acoustic guitar, someone playing it for me, I'd be more than willing to step on stage and do that. A couple drinks, maybe. No drinks. Somebody no drinks. truck. I'm going there sober. Okay. In a farmer's field. There it is. Yep. No, I, I'm not going to do it. I just said I'm not going to do it. You don't want to have fun on the bus. And no, I'd love bus. to have fun, but they can go back and watch it. Okay. I'd love to have fun. But I just set the stage about being on a stage and I would do that. A lot of respect for Kip Moore. It's your true calling, though. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the lab. Somebody right girl. Lab. Could be my true calling. In a red sundress. I told you. Well, you we're not going to play the game where we press Taylor this much. Until, until oh, I think it. I'm trying to go back and forth with you. I'm singing too. I'm singing too. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've done the line of sand. Go ahead. We'll finish the song up. I need the lyrics pulled up. <laughs> that was all I knew. <laughs> Don't pull up. But uh, overall, overall, it was an awesome time. And those guys are unreal. Like the PFT had a couple of solos. I was like, dude, is, he's really good. And Taylor's he next to is me. really good. And she's like, is he good? Do we know if he's actually good? Because we don't know anything about guitar. I was like, it sounds good. And he's doing a solo. So Watch therefore he's good. Yeah. yeah. I feel like there's a totally different type of voice for country and then for pop punk. Are you better at pop punk or are you better at country? Dude, I, I like to think I'm like my, my major at Michigan. I'm general studies, dude. I can do a little wow. bit of everything. Okay. I think so. Self glaze. <laughs> Someone's got a self glaze every J once in a while. JP called it. It's if you're not going to be, you know, promoting yourself the most, who's going to do it for you? I'm with you. Take the rib out. No doubt. Take the rib <laughs> <laughs> suck, suck your own dick man take Dude, the rib out yes yep yeah. everyone i love that everybody knows that too a couple, like years, a couple universal... years from now i'll come on the bus i'll have my my fingernails painted i'll take the rib out hey uh just fully buy noah it. lyles fastest man in the world got the hair beads in got the painted nails yeah setting the tone for caleb williams to be great he took a rib out you think he took a rib out yeah Noah lyles get a little faster no question. Maybe. Less weight aerodynamic. Maybe. Brings it in here a little bit. I see that. Did he actually take it? Did Marilyn Manson actually take a uh, rib out? Or was uh, that just a rumor? I'm not sure. Can we pull that up? I don't I don't think we want to know what yeah, the truth you know is. What? Like, don't let's just say don't he took a rib out. Forever, I want to just think yeah. that Marilyn Manson took a rib out. Do we want to get into our draft? Because I'm real excited about I it. I know. I'm excited too. But do we want to hit Scotty Sheffler? Do we want to... I mean, Scotty Scheffler is on a generational run. Generational run. run. Won the Masters. New father. Arrested. Won the gold. Had a great viral moment of being arrested. And it's like, hey, check yourself. Yeah. You know who this is? The golfer. Yeah. yeah no, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm saying I'm. Oh, oh, like, oh, oh, yeah, oh. I thought you were checking me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, know, yeah I know you know yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, golf. Yeah. Yeah. S yeah. Since March of this year, Scotty Scheffler has six wins on tour. One major and his second Masters. He had his first child. He was arrested at the PGA Championship where he was favored and a gold medal. I think he's won like close to 40 million already this he's year. He's the man right he's now. He's the man. He's, he's having a massive man right now. And you're rocking a hell of a shirt right now too. Take it off. Show the camera. Free Scotty. Take the shirt off. Show the camera. <laughs> Let's go. For the people, got it. He's got it on. I see you with a little tan too. A little sun kiss. Jersey swap, Scotty. If you see this, yeah. Jersey swap. Let's yeah, go. The gold medal. For he hates this shirt. So I'm sorry, he hates it. Why? 
said it was, you know, traumatizing. He hates reliving it, but fair. That's exactly what a legend would say. Because if he bought into it, it'd be like, all right, come on, Scott, you're doing oh, too no. much. Before we get into the draft, I do have to get off my chest. Go ahead. Um, how bad the House of Dragons finale was. Oh. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. There's no spoilers. I won't give any spoilers. There's not a whole lot to spoil. That last episode was just dry. It was nothing but one-on-one -on -one conversations the whole time. Like, yes, they're setting. are they setting it up for a massive war? Absolutely. Am I going to be tuned in when season three drops in a couple of years? Unfortunately, yes. But that finale was brutal, man. Brutal. I sure, and I sure, I see you kind of staring at me back there. I know you're a House of Dragon watcher as well. Do you dis, seems like you might disagree a little bit. I do disagree. I see all your points. I totally get it. They built it up. They showed it to us. They teased it. And then to black, see you in two years. That's kind of crazy. Right. I agree with that. But it was because of the writer strike is what I'm hearing. That during the writer's strike, they were filming season two. There was some stuff that was going to be in the finale of season two. In order to get season two out in time slash season three out in time, they had to cut some stuff at the end of season two, save it for season three. So I can understand that and still be excited for the next season. But the show is. The I'm show's awesome. It. This kind of goes back to the conversation we had a few months ago about watching a show like with everybody as it's coming out as opposed to watching a show just binging the however many seasons it has yeah this is a pro towards waiting and watching and binging because if there is a season three already and you're just binging the show it's like man i can't wait to see what happens there you but go. now you guys are in the position where you have to wait two years big w for patience big w for patience and you know my wife's big into this show right now she tries to get me on it you've tried to get me on it i have no idea why i'm not doing it but it sounds like I'll pick it up right wait, before season three. Yeah, wait till season three. I'm going to wait till season three and I'll pick it up as we get into it and then we'll all be excited. Because the uh, war is going to be insane. I heard there's like a dance insane. of the dragons coming like that. I heard there's some dragon fights that are like ungodly. Oh yeah. They're it is unreal. Sick. There's now like 10 total dragons. The show started out, there's only like five dragon riders. There's 10 now. Wow. That's this, not a uh, Yeah, That's I mean, they're set. Shout out how to train your dragon for making this all happen. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah. That show, by the way, if you haven't seen that that cartoon movie, it is incredible. Maybe Toothless. Team I'll Toothless. Check it out. It is really that I'll show. Check it out. It might be one of the greatest. I don't think so. Yeah, it's the top. It's incredible. Yeah. Same uh, guy who did that movie also did Goon. I would have loved if last night. Really? Sherm. I would have loved if last night's episode was episode seven. I agree with that. Just because even the week before that was very dull. And I get it. The, the storytelling, the books are written, so that's the that's the upside. Yeah. It's not like season seven of Game of Thrones ended and you have two years to speculate on what's going to happen and then Hollywood kind of makes it what it is. These books are out, so it's going to be, season three is going to be awesome. I just, from the entertainment perspective, man, I, I, I needed something. I needed some kind of blood. I get it. There wasn't a ton of character arc <laughs> in general. I'm just such a diehard. I feel like Taylor's going to be obsessed with Daemon Targaryen. Probably. I'm a diehard for his character and seeing his character arc change. I don't want to spoil anything, but seeing where he oh, started bro, the, at the in, in the, in the end too. Yeah, dude, that that's all I needed of like, okay, he's, he, he's kind Some of game of Thrones set up callback. He's a little anti -hero. No spoilers. You don't know if he's villain or not. And like, I love characters like that. And since they're driving that storyline, that makes me happy. That's why I was like successful season. I, I I did enjoy seeing the visions that he had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. spoilers. He's no spoilers. Get... No spoilers. No spoilers. No uh, spoilers. Am I correct? Danny? Danny? No spoilers. No spoilers. Am I correct in assuming that you guys have not read the books? Night King. Right. Because okay. I, I think if I read the books, I probably don't mind the finale because you kind of already know what's you in know the works and what's coming. My question for anybody I love who... it so much. I just wanted more. That's what. I love too hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's one of your greatest qualities. It hurts you sometimes, but it makes everybody else feel special. <laughs> I want to know this in the comments of anybody who has read the books. So this is a like a prequel to Game of Thrones, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. Do the books lead up to the first season of Game of Thrones? Like, will will all will all be untied and dressed perfectly to where like the finale, the true finale of House of Dragons, is essentially the start of Game of Thrones? 
No. No. Because this is dated, what, 150 to 200 years prior to yes. Game of Thrones? It, there's the Mad, easily, there's the Mad King era. 50 years later. 25 years later. Right. They, they could, could go Mad King era, which I hope happens. Would be sick. But it, yeah, it's I, I, do, I do know of Mad King. Okay. I do know of him. And you're not big on Lord of the Rings, correct? I went to Lord of the Rings when I was 12 years old with my grandmother, and I saw guys chasing, and all dressed in black with black horses, chasing somebody, and I got too scared I made us leave. And that's okay. And that's just me being as vulnerable as I can with yeah, you boys. that's okay. That's why I'm in all black today. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly scared like Taylor's of Taylor's favorite color. He's you trying to address. The most, yeah. And then you're fearful of nothing. Yeah, according to Bill, it's also your favorite color. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God. The dead combine. Yeah, what shot the up. fuck? <laughs> Oh, oh, that was God. a dad combine reference for those of you listening who haven't seen dad combine yet. Hey, on, on the, in the area of TV, check out presumed innocent. Yeah. JP has been on my ass about yeah. it. And it's really, we need everybody up to speed to. because the boys we got myself, JP, Mitch and Garrett, we've all watched it. Jack Sherman Taylor have not yet. Coop hasn't either. And I think by the time you guys get done, we can just, we can talk about it. There is a uh, a little deal that Garrett and I made right before this episode. If I start watching Presumed Innocent, the moment I start watching that, you will watch. Shorzy. That is correct. Which is, I mean, all the layers you you're talking about of like House of Dragons and the fighting and like development of characters, you're going to get that in Shorzy. You're really going to enjoy that. Truly. Uh, I'm excited for you guys to watch Presumed Innocent. And it's like a uh, true detective type of deal. Yeah. It's based on a novel which I hear are different. Have you read about that without giving spoilers? I'm, I've tried okay. to stay away from all that. Based on your, yeah. yeah. But I'm saying, I, I want to say uh, the endings are different. Yeah. I haven't read though. You haven't read what's different about it? No. We'll talk after. Hey, we'll talk after. We'll talk. Thank after. God you were talking. Cause what Sherman just said on the screen, I never want to see it on the screen again. I think I caught a glimpse. Trevor Keegan, former Michigan alum said Philadelphia, the Eagle stadium would never be as loud as Michigan's. Ooh. Said the public Philadelphia Eagles practice was louder than Michigan ever was. And that's just a rookie trying to implement himself in the in a terrifying culture. I yeah, but that look, I get it. I get it. Michigan's not that big. We've loud. established we've that. Established we've established that, that. It's hard for me to fight that battle because it's 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 true. It's not that loud of a stadium, even though it is the largest stadium in all of North America, third largest in the world. They can and I'm telling you, Michigan, you can fix this. Aluminum, just aluminum the whole thing up. <laughs> Benches, the the walkway, every that's what Washington does. That's what Seattle does. You do that, and then just take those sweet sections, and then with the 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 the, the big screens, just box it in with the aluminum. Now you got the loudest stadium in the entire world. I don't know. You 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 need a rabid fan base to have a loud stadium. Well, we have a rabid fan base. Ah, uh, I don't think Michigan's a rabid fan base. Would you honestly say that? Academics yeah, I think they're high. yes. Because the same reason why when you check the forums when you were at Nebraska and there was all these crazy people talking X, Y, and Z and the Twitter and the searches, all of those things you had, I also had. Now, do I see as many Michigan people before this season with the Michigan hats like you That's do with I'm the saying. bones up? No. But I know that, that that stadium is sold out every single Saturday in the fall. Every single home game in the fall, that thing is sold out. People in that part of the country bleed maize and blue i don't think you believe that i mean i think i said it with some conviction didn't i you did a good job articulating it <laughs> but you still don't believe it just because i because you, know. you think i'm a liar <laughs> yeah, we're back no, to that. No, no. <laughs> here we go again and here we go again what is it why we got connor stallions up so it was confirmed that that why, was why? connor stallions on the sideline okay then that's matt miller on the left Central at uh, Central Michigan. Okay. You guys are scumbags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the NCAA also came out and said that the 23 text messages between Sharon Moore and Connor Stallions were not breaking any rules, further proving that Connor Stallions was a one-man mission. They, come on. And we covered against top, all the Here, top 10 teams we play in the back half of the season. You guys did a... Covered. You guys covered the Just best covered. job at... Taking advantage hey, of every rule. Doesn't matter when there. you learn it, you can still use it when you learn it, can't you, JP? No. Yes. Sorry, I'll do So every single thing I ever learned from here on out, I just can't use. I have to keep it back in my mind. Yeah, dude. <laughs> embody, embody this national championship, dude. We we won it. Fair and square. Oh, I mean that's debatable. It's debatable, but when people hear <laughs> There you go. It's debatable. The podcast we did yesterday that I can't say who it was. 
He did a great job. He did a great job. He's a very smart man. You guys did a great job of of towing the line in every part of the rule book in the NCAA. Right. Which goes back to a oh, like the Patriots. Great teams use the rules to their advantage. Right. So, so did you cheat? Probably. Not. But it hasn't been found yet. No. It hasn't been found yet, dude. They've had all the time in the world. They're the NCAA. Well, they can subpoena and indict and do whatever the hell they want. They have free range. They're a monopoly. What we know right now is that it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck. No, we don't. We just don't have the final, hey, this was a duck. No, this is one of those situations. It was born one way, but we're not sure type of situation. We don't, we're not, we're not fully clear on the situation. That's what it is. You know what we are clear on? Shady Rays. Yeah, we are. Shady Rays. The sunglasses of the summer, the official sunglass brand, sunglasses brand of Barstool Sports and Bustin' with the Boys. Our friends have you covered with their newest and boldest premium polarized shades. Mm. They're kicking off their most anticipated, check this out, boys, their most anticipated release of 2024 with a limited edition debut of their rival collection. This is a new single lens style in Barstool Blue with a premium stool and stars lens etched in. And if you're looking for something more casual, the classics are always getting the Barstool treatment. Both of these styles are perfect for all day, everyday comfort and performance. They have hundreds of options to choose from. So you are bound to find the perfect pair for your style. And if you don't love the shit, the shades, exchange oh. them. If you don't love the shades, yeah, exchange them show. for a new pair. Or return them worry-free within 30 days. There's no risk with the boys. Their team always has your back with personal and fast support. Head to ShadyRays.com. Use code BOYS for 35% off your polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades that are rated five stars by over 300,000 people. ShadyRays.com. Use code BOYS. I mean, 35% off is basically stealing from a company. Yeah. How are they going to make any money? 35 is crazy. That's nuts. 35 is crazy. Wild. And they're good-looking shades. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out Shady Rays, dude. Can we please get to this this uh draft? Yeah, the Can all, we please get to it? The all NFL summer games teams of Will Compton and Taylor Lewan. We will be doing a draft for the four by one hundred meter, the high jump, the fifty meter freestyle and swimming, shot put, fencing, and rifling to build out the all NFL team. Got some notes here, ready to get into it. So we're going to flip a Lucy can here. All right. For the first pick in our, I'm assuming this is a snake draft, right? This is a snake draft type of situation. Gotta be. Gotta be. E, sure. Well, no. Let's go back forth. Back we'll just go back, back forth, back forth, back forth. Cause it can't go me one, him two, then back to me too. Yeah. That's crazy talk. Hey, should we flip for each event? Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 We're going to use the, uh, the espresso four milligram Lucy, um, uh, the breakers. Breakers phenomenal. Is heads. I don't even know if we have an ad, but this is phenomenal stuff. You should get it at lucy.co slash Um all right, you call it in the air. Breakers is heads. Breakers is heads. Bottom is his tails. Heads. Ready? Heads. We gotta wait till it's in the air. Okay. Heads. Good. <laughs> Will won that. You heard by his clap, and that was Will Compton's <laughs> clap. We are doing we're starting with the four by one hundred, correct? Yeah. All right. NFL players. Current current NFL players. And we players. can't double dip in different events. Correct. So if you pick somebody in this, you can't pick somebody in for a different event, just so we have clarity. Go ahead, Will. With the first pick in the Summer Games NFL Draft, I will be selecting Raheem Mostert from the Dolphins. He's clocked in at over 23 miles an hour. He ran a 9.98 100-meter dash at Oki State. And that is my first pick. I was looking to go elsewhere, but once I did a little digging, uh, you see that Raheem has the uh, stats to back up that he could be the fastest man in the 100 meters. We'll make this quick. In the NFL. Uh, my The second pick is going to go to Tyreek Hill, has been the fastest recorded um, player for like eight years in a row. Call him the cheater for a reason. Uh, that's my guy. That's my first pick. He ran a, And just for information out there, he ran a 10.19 in the 100 meter dash. All right, this is where it gets... We spent like 30 minutes. My second pick is going to be Xavier Worthy. Good pick. The fastest recorded 40-yard dash. Yep. He also, as a sophomore in high school, ran a 10.65. Didn't compete after that because COVID started to take place, but you can imagine, mm -hmm. right? Maybe the steal of the draft. Great pick. Good pick. Strong pick. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mitch. I know how the podcast works. Um, <laughs> my second pick is going to go to... I might mispronounce his name, but Tariq Woolen 
Tariq Woolen. Tariq Woolen. <laughs> DB, Seattle Seahawks, recorded at 22.25 miles per hour on a pick six in October of 2023. But he was not the individual that had the pick. He was actually blocking for Witherspoon. So imagine this man and what he would put on the field or on the track if he was running for himself and his boys. Let me tell you what he's put on the track. A 21.46 200-meter dash in high school. Didn't know we're doing one-ups, but okay. We'll do that now. No, I'm just, you know, that's a good pick. Your third pick. My third pick is going to go to Devon Ashane. Devin Ashane. Another Miami running back. Another Miami running back ran a 4-3, 140-yard dash, and he also ran a 10.14 100-meter in high school. Mm. High school. 10.14. Look it up. I'm looking at two here. And I know a lot of casual fans are looking at this guy going, have you not picked him yet? I'm going to take him off the board. And it's going to be DK Metcalf. Buda Baker pick in a Cardinal Stadium is all the evidence you need for that. Um, and he's got that walk off the bus intimidation. He walks off the bus and the rest of the track team is like, oh, fuck. We're done. And he's eating a, ba- a pack of Skittles. Like this dude don't even eat right. And he's running like this. We'll get him in the lab. We'll say, hey, listen, we love that you love snacks. We love that you love candy. But we're going to go ahead and dial on the diet for a little bit because we have the Olympic Games for the NFL coming up. Can't say that. Bleep that. Fuck. The summer games. All summer NFL. Games. Um, quick question. Yeah. Is this also in order of what you would want them to run in the race? No. We'll figure that out okay, as we'll I watch times out. and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's Tariq. Wow. All right. I'm going to go with Devin DuVernay. He is a return specialist, played for the Ravens. He is currently with the Jaguars. He ran a 10.27 in high school. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Uh, my last pick is going to have multiple layers to it. It is going to be DJ Turner, the second cornerback out of Cincinnati. Um, he went to Michigan. So now we have leadership qualities. We have guys that are to keep guys in check, understand that the standard is the standard at the combine in 2023. He had the fastest time at a 4.26 ran a 10, eight in the hundred meter. You know, who we missed. I wish it could be five legs. Marquise Goodwin. Mm. Oh, Ran at 10.25. However, he's getting a little longer in the tooth. Yeah. You got to stay young out there. I, lo- I love this. I love the draft. This I love my picks. I'm excited to see what people think who would win this. Should we move on to our next event? Do, or do we want to have the boys say who they think without looking into it too much? Because it's close. So close. It's a great race. It's a great race. Yeah. yeah. It needs to. Yeah. All Star Week. That would be a. That would be it. Oh, my last pick was DJ Turner the second. He was on my or board. Junior. He was on my board. Yes. Next event. All right, here we go. Next event is going to be high jump. Call it in the air. Heads. Heads. Yes. Hey, I almost didn't get it. I know. I know. I think. I think that was a good uh, character move by you. Yeah, because I. You did I catch it. So, you yeah. looked at yeah. it, and you just. Kept it where it was. Um, um, let's see here. Two people come to mind in the high jump, but I am going to end up taking Byron Jones. Byron Combine, Jones. Combine 44 and a half inch, inch vertical. He plays corner. A uh, lot of body control when you're going up. You're in man coverage. You have to contort your body in interesting ways to get up and catch and high point the ball. Uh, it just takes a lot that you see in the high jump area because it's not just about how high you can jump. It's about technique involved as well. So a corner to me was the was the obvious choice, especially one with bunnies like 44.5 inches. Good pick. That's where I wanted DK. See, I think DK got too much ass. I'm going to go with a uh, place for the Patriots. 
Jalen Rager. He is uh, Jalen Rager. Yes, sir. He jumped six feet six inches when he competed in high school, which I don't know that that could be his school record. Could be good. Why? That's only six inches higher than you when you were seven in middle school. Seven middle school, yeah. But then I developed too much ass. Couldn't clear again. Way too much ass. Um, let's go. Do we want to do 50 freestyle? Okay. 50 freestyle next. Will, call it in the air. Heads. Heads. Always heads. Let's go with uh, for my swimmer. Cuts out a lot of the league. Let's go. Um, let's go, Cooper DeGene. God damn it, dude! Throw him in the water. Throw you know, him in you the know, water. You know he can swim. That's fast. a good one. This was probably the most <laughs> difficult. <clears throat> My next. I, that was the pick. That was the pick. I'm gonna go Joey Bosa with my pick. Joey Hear me Bosa. Out. Hear me out. Grew up in Florida. Sinking. Grew up in Florida. The Florida boys are just different around the water. I was in I was in 38 just last week and I saw a bunch of Flo- uh, Florida boys walk down and just go so far in the water. They're floating and swimming. Just zero awareness with the sharks in the water and all that. They're just built a little bit different. He's got the broad shoulders. He's more slender than Nick Bosa. Yeah, there's a sinking issue. There's no question about it. But my question is, who else are we taking? Okay. There's a lot of guys out there. No, Joey's my pick and I think he will grunt out AW against... Cooper DeGene. Next event? Yeah. Okay. You flip Oh, yeah. Call it. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, shot put. I didn't call it. <laughs> call in the air. Heads. Heads. <laughs> uh, a, lot shot of, a lot of put. breakers. Now, looking through this list, the obvious choice was going to be Joe Thomas, if we're doing past and present. Um, but now we got to go with the silverback. A 99 rated overall power. Small legs, but a lot of torque in his body. That's going to be Trent Williams is going to be my pick. I have a sneaky pick here. I did some research. He threw uh, he threw as far as uh, 46 and 11 and a quarter. I hope that's good. Jalen Hurts. Strong lower body. You know he's got the arm on him. A hell of a hand. Great corner. technique. Yes. Good pick. Fun pick. Fun pick. Fun pick. I think the intimidation factor, though, of Trent Williams takes that. Jalen ain't worried about that. He knows it's all in the technique, bro. He's going to look, look at Trent and be like, this guy has no clue what he's doing. He'll figure it out. No question. But he ain't throwing it 46. He's got four years of training. He ain't, he ain't, <laughs> he ain't throwing it 46. You're uh, up, Flip. Yeah, pass me the Lucy can. Things are getting a little tight in here, I feel. <laughs> All right, fencing. You get your boys, I'll get my boys, and we'll, we'll line Call it up. Come here. Heads. Heads. <laughs> fencing? Fencing is a difficult one. Yeah, fencing is a little difficult. I'm going to go Justin Jefferson. I think he's got the talent, the length, the ability, the grittiness, the competitive nature. That would have been a great pick for your high jump. I thought about him, but I love my pick at high jump. Mm-hmm. A little unsung hero can actually do it. Yeah. The four main qualities you need for fencing is speed, anticipation, reflexes, and mental strength. Those are the love four it. things you need. And I, I, it took me a while. I did think to myself, Tyreek Hill for a minute, but he's obviously been taken off the board. He worked with F1 drivers, and even the F1 drivers walked away and like, yo, his reflexes are actually pretty incredible. But then I got to thinking, reflexes, speed. It doesn't always have to be linear speed, but speed off the ball, that fast twitch, the movement, being elusive, those types of things. And keeping it sharp up top, you got to go defensive lineman on that. I took Micah Parsons. Love it. Give me a massive pick. target. Give him a massive target. See, he's. He, I also chose that because he is one of the more slender looking defensive ends in the league. Quick twitch, long, very bendy, great reflexes. Great reflexes on the fly to be able to see an offensive alignment set and know to go inside, outside, or through the middle is a very underrated quality. 
that guys need. I think Micah Parsons is a, is a great pick for this. Rifling. Last event, rifling. Is it me or you? It is you flipping, and go ahead. I'll call it in the air. It's going to be heads. Heads. Oh, now you're getting scummy. Okay. <laughs> I got my pick here. No, go ahead. Um, Rifling. First thought is hunters. People that go out. They use the scope. They understand winds and crosswinds and all that stuff, seeing animals in the distance. And then I thought about busting with the boys and guys that we've had on here before. And then I thought about this podcast and who was on the Detroit Lions. And I ended up with an all-pro center at Frank Ragnow. It's a great pick. Thank you. It's a great pick. Fun fact, we USA lost in rifling. Okay. Thank you for that fact, Will. Feels Fun like fact. We- it was like, we shouldn't lose it rifling. No, we should absolutely not. Also, who's the dude that just kind of came out casual and just... Beast. Beast. Give just me... walked up. Give me Christian McCaffrey for rifling. Precision. Focus. Blocking out the noise. Training for four years. CMC. We got a great ball club. I'm a, you know, I'm a big CMC guy. I love him. I don't know if that's your guy. Because he was so focused growing up on playing ball, I don't think he ever went hunting one time. Imagine cool. that type of training ability towards rifling. Yeah, and his old man in his ear? That family's built off of passion. And they train for the passions. Their passion is football. You're going to pivot his passion into rifling? I have no doubt that Christian can be an absolute stud in anything he chooses to do, but I don't know if Christian's going to choose that rifling is going to be the thing for him. He knows if he's representing my ball club in these games, that man will be dialed. I think it was a good draft. I think you you're strong in the beginning. There's no question about it. Look, I think you got names. My 50 freestyle is my, my least favorite. I thought Cooper DeGene, I was like, that's the obvious pick there. You got him. I was about to throw CMC in the water, but I liked him in rifling. <laughs> See, I think CMC in the water, I could look back at that and go, damn, I, I really missed that one. Yeah. I missed that one. I feel good about it, though. I feel good about this. I think it's going to be, you know what it's going to be? A competitive games. No question about it. Nail biters all around. Yeah. Well, who, who you guys got? What team you guys picking? What ball club? Team uh, Willie? I'd have to see it all. Yeah, yeah, we, we don't have to. You can chime in on the internet tomorrow. Yeah. And we'll get a graphic up. Let the people vote. Let the yeah. people vote. But that was fun. Yeah, that was a good It was time. a great idea, Garrett. Great idea. Shall we get into the uh, training camp interviews? Let's get into the training camp interviews. Amon Ross St. Brown, Panay Sewell. Swelly. Swell. Swell. And Jared Goff. Jared yes. Goff was a lot of fun. Yeah, they all were. We didn't know. We didn't know if Jared Goff was going to be a little more vanilla. He was a good time. Yeah. Took a couple jabs. I loved it. Took a couple jabs. Gave a couple jabs. Yeah. Fun stuff. But before we get into this episode, I want to talk to you. And so did Amon Ross St. Brown on Michigan. That was a fun little. Well, yeah. And there's actually an agreement between him and I about going on his podcast after Michigan USC, September 21st. So we will see. We will see. One thing you guys can see is the brightness of my tattoos. And any of you, they say 50% of America is now having tattoos. So we're getting to that majority category. Bust with the Boys is sponsored by Hustle Butter Tattoo Care. New or old, Hustle Butter products keeps our skin moisturized, our tattoos vibrant, so they can look and feel their best for life. Tattoos are an investment. I, I guess so. Yeah, I guess they're an investment because they're on your body for the rest of your life. Keep them staying fresh for life with Hustle Butter. I just said myself, I put these bad boys on. It's nice. And I actually, you know, could use a little bit more right now. I, uh, I'm i a little ashy, if I'm being honest. But when I put the hustle butter on, it looks phenomenal. Uh, I have been trying them all, and I love <laughs> the way they leave my skin soft and my tattoos vibrant. We love hustle butter, and we know you will too. Right now, you're give, we're giving you guys 50% off your order on their website. Use code BUSSIN15 on hustlebutter.com. Exclusive, exclusions apply. Don't wait. At Hustle Butter. 
Real never fades. And remember, head over to the website hustlebutter.com and use code BUSSIN15 for 15% off your order. Have a great day. Please enjoy this episode. It was a lot of fun to do. We did a lot of traveling last week to get this done. Uh, Detroit fans, welcome. Hope you guys subscribe, rate five stars, and leave comments. It's the only way that helps us grow and grow and grow. Big hugs, tiny kisses. We will see y'all later. Right. Yeah, we got you. Get in, get off, get out. Get in, get off, get out. We know the drill. Appreciate it. Um, okay, first off, uh, I don't know if this is breaking news. The Detroit Lions are now a cool football team. <laughs> it's now cool. It's now cool to be a Lions fan. It's cool to be in the uh, in Michigan and being like, yo, we have the best college football program of all time, 30 minutes away from Detroit, and now we possibly have – Super Bowl champions in 2024, but I feel like you and I are very similar when it comes to the draft. I'll take you back to 2014. Lions were picking at number 10. I went to the University of Michigan. I was sitting there. I was saying to myself, for the love of God, please, Lions, do not pick me. I do not want to go to this horrendous franchise. No disrespect, because I just said we're cool now. I just said we're cool, so it's all good. I have some intel saying that you felt very similar in those situations, and now you're part of a cool franchise. How's it feel? Uh, no, not similar at all, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> let's just get that out the way. Um, I mean, it's a lot different than when you were going in the draft. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, you didn't have Campbell, you didn't have Holmes. So uh, uh, when I got drafted, I was really just happy. I mean, to be honest, I thought I was going to go earlier. So once I just went past five, I was kind of like, all right, wherever I go, I'm meant to be. I got picked here, and uh, I think it's the best decision of my life, to be honest. Where where'd you think you were going to go? I think I was going to go to uh, Cincinnati. Were you hopeful for that? No, nah, honestly, I was hopeful for anything. Just, I didn't care. Yeah. yeah. That's right, because that was when they were talking about Cincinnati needs to take a tackle. And they mm-hmm. took Jamar Chase, yeah, right? Yeah, Chase, yep. And made a great decision for them. Was your camp sitting there being like, yo, Cincinnati's the move. That's where you're going to go. Uh, For the most part, it was leaning towards that way. Yeah. And how's it been seeing the fandom of the Lions when you first got here? People are excited about Dan and all that, but there was just like the 30 years. You guys literally broke the seal on something they haven't done forever. Seeing it now this year, all the hype, you get back in the city, you see everyone just totally dialed into everything. How does that feel knowing that you've been a huge part of that? Man, it, just, it feels amazing, amazing to be honest. Just because my rookie year, I think we didn't win a game until like week 12 or like 11 or something like that. And that was depressing, to be honest. Never been a part of something like that. And uh, just to see our growth from there and just to see what type of dudes that are in this building now, it's just amazing. You just see the progress. You see the the blueprint that Holmes and Campbell put together and uh, just makes you love the game, you know. With all, like, uh, everybody loves Coach Campbell. He's always got the clips that go viral. People love the the football guy that he, that he is. What is your biggest pet peeve of Coach Campbell? Pet peeve. There's not a lot. But sometimes <laughs> when he's in a team meeting room, he'll go on a spiel. And when he's on a spiel, sometimes he needs to take a break. And it's a long break. And you just don't know what's going to like come out of his mouth next. So he's going on about a story. He'll pause for a nice three minutes. And then – totally just veer off another direction like we could talk about football and then have that pause and then talk about his dog and then end the conversation and then it's over it's done a you're just like hu- i thought that was supposed to be like kind of inspirational motivational kind of get something out of it and then he'll just yeah man he's really thinking of something deep here that's you he yes exactly you i was in the team meeting room for three like, minutes oh man i'm about to get pumped right now like, yeah okay give me something coach and then Dog loves steak or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, that's probably the one thing. You know, after the first 30 seconds of that three minute period, you're just like, hey, what's he doing? Like, <laughs> you whisper to your boy, like, kind of nudging his leg or whatever. You can like, see his Yo. heart racing too. He's just yeah. like breathing heavily and you're just like, all right, come on, coach. Okay, what are you about to say? And then he drops that and you're just like, all right, coach. I'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah. uh, dude, your offensive line is probably one of the best in the entire NFL. Like, Sorry. No, that's, that's not a big deal. I'm just giving you a hard time. But with, with Frank and then Graham leaving and coming back and Decker and you, like the expectation for you guys got to be so high this year. Like, do you guys talk about how, you know, there's such a, like the, the foundation of the team is really on the offensive line. Do you guys talk about how important it is for you guys to essentially live up to the standard that everyone's putting on you guys right now? Uh, we definitely don't talk about it. Because I think a lot of people already know, mm-hmm. and that everyone else is kind of talking for us. And so I think our thing is is just coming into the building every day, and being that example. You know, just not even talking about it, just be it. 
and uh, fill in those shoes with no hesitation and a lot of confidence. So I don't think we need to talk about it. So we just be about it. The Simple. offensive line rooms are the best. <laughs> what do you guys operate by any rules? So for example, it's like uh, the fine system. The fine. There's always a fine system. I feel like everywhere. If you get mentioned in a team meeting, you know that's a fine. If you're doing anything quirky, like what rules does your guys' offensive line room have? Uh, or maybe it's with rookies. Maybe it's yeah, with the young guys. No rules for like I guess the vets and the older guys, but the rookies they have to um, stock the fridge, sodas, juice, uh, water, whatever whatever the fellas want and then snacks Lil debbie's gotta be a lot of Lil debbie snacks um, big little debbie guy yeah, yeah big Respect. big time and then uh and that's about it and then maybe one of the vets want like an espresso machine or like a hot dog stand or whatever they want so they'll ask the rookies and they, they gotta stand. get it yeah has a rookie ever dropped the ball no so far this rookie class has been great honestly that's and, good uh, what about, the hol- what about the holiday season? You get into Spooktober. You got Thanksgiving around the corner. Christmas. Uh, so do far, want- just Christmas. We don't yeah. do uh, Thanksgiving or uh, Halloween. Oh, we have the rookies um, decorate the room. And um, I think that's about it, to be honest. You guys get each other gifts? Yeah, yeah. We do like a white elephant type vibe. Is there a limit? Uh, last year, it was 1000 1000 minimum? Yeah, minimum. That's a good white elephant. That's a good white elephant. That's a good white elephant. Yeah, yeah. Get nice. Yeah, yeah. Some nice stuff out there. Some paid boys yeah. in there, too. I'm always trying to negotiate <laughs> down. Like, hey, let's do 50. Yeah. Knowing it'll go up from there. Right. And you can't do cash. Right. Can't yeah, do yeah, cash. Yeah, no, no, no. I can't. I, I don't want to step on your guys' traditions, but you guys really need to start decorating for Halloween. You're in the middle of the season, the dog days. You should days. make the rookies dress I mean, we up have, for Halloween. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, wait. Actually, the, the team ha- the team has something. It's not just the O line, okay. but the team has a thing where all the rookies have to dress up for Halloween nice. and then. Campbell introduces them, and say what they are. Got you. So yeah. Uh, growing up, you grew up in Samoa, correct? Correct, American Samoa. And then you went to Utah when you were twelve years old. Correct. When when did you pick up football? Because obviously, you go into Oregon, you're an immediate starter. You win the Allen Trophy. Like you've had a, a very decorated career already. But usually, kids are picking the picking up the game at like five, six, seven years mm-hmm. old. Were you doing that? In uh, Samoa? I've always been around a game. So like not playing it like with pads on and everything. But my dad was a coach. So, honestly, since probably like four, five, I've been around the game, just running around his high school team, helping them set up cones, and uh, oftentimes running the drills with the players. And then uh, my first padded youth um, gig was when I was nine turning 10. And this age group is a little different on the island because – you can't really be specific because of money and all that. It's not that much. So the ring, I think it was like 10 to 13 you could play. And then, like, um, that was the only range for the youth football down there. So I was 9 turning 10, and my two older brothers were already playing. And I was like, man, I'm on the, I'm on the edge. Let me play. My dad didn't let me play that year just because everyone was just huge at 13 on the island. Um, and so I played my uh, when I was 10. And that's when I just I got killed left and right just getting killed by these 13 14 year olds um didn't didn't play at all but i think that moment right there is what really set me up for success because once i got to the island i was the bully like growing up i knew all those hits that i got were like hard and like all those things is kind of like taken as a little kid now i'm the one giving it you know yeah. what i mean so like i'm the one setting the tone and I know what it feels like, and I know how to what it looks like. So, what was it like growing up in a household like you? Obviously, your three brothers—they all play ball. Your mm-hmm. old man's a head coach. What's uh, it like growing up in an environment like that? Honestly, it was a lot of fun. A lot of broken things in the house. Mom didn't like it, <laughs> um, but yeah, super fun. We played football every second we had. Was and, your dad uh, hard on you guys for football? Yeah, uh, that's about it though. It was like football was my dad, and academics was my mom. Yeah. So, but yeah, he was really harsh on us uh, in terms of like doing the right things and uh, uh, learning the plays and stuff like that. So, but every chance we got on the island to play football on the beach, in our backyard, on a mountain, like we played it. And it was like our football was like a uh, a bottle like this. Sorry, let me not put that up like that one. Yeah. And then we'd fill it up the bottom with like sand 
and then water, and then have some weight on it, and that'd be our football just because we didn't have one. That's bad. No way. And then we just toss it around and just tackle each other, basically. Yeah, that's <laughs> wild. And then you end up going to Oregon, which has like the nicest facilities of oh, all time. Oh my gosh! Yeah, no, it was a total, total flip. Total and, uh, flip. What made you blessing. choose Oregon? Uh, to be honest, it was the personnel that was there. Uh, head coach Mario Cristobal. Uh, that's my guy. Um, Love that dude to death, and fell in love with this whole philosophy, his whole vibe, and what he's about. And I know he's an old line guy too. And to have an old line guy as a head coach, I think it's uh, pretty good for me. So no doubt. Should we tear talk? Let's hear some tear talk real quick. All right. So we have this segment called tear talk, where essentially you tear one through three like your top three. Our tear talk with you is going to be necessities in training camp. What are the top three things that you have to have that you have to pack? Do you guys stay in a hotel? No, no, no. You I'm get with, to go home? Yep, yep. Well, what are the three things you have to have during training camp? Um, Phone, I guess. But, like, with That's the, with the phone, I watch movies a lot just during the breaks. Um, are you a gamer? I am a gamer. But like, were you, like, a rookie that if you were in a hotel anywhere, you're packing your Xbox oh, yeah, or yeah, PlayStation? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm packing that thing. Yeah, yeah, if, I think uh, – my rookie year, we went to – or no, second year, we went to Indy for, like, a joint training camp. Yeah. Like that thing. I was like, yeah, I need it. I'm a big NCAA guy right now, so that's got me hooked. You play with else? Oregon? All the time. I mean, have they're, to. they're one of you the best good? teams in the game. Huh? You any, any good? Any good? Nah, I'm still trying yeah, to figure I'm, out the – I'm horrendous. That's why yeah. I'm sitting in the same boat. Yeah. yeah. It's a little different. But uh, what else do I need? I don't really need much, to be honest. How about some gold bond? Are you a chafer during training camp? Nah. No, I'm good. <sighs> Lucky yeah. you, man. Good yeah, for I am. you. Plus, you keep I would always, on. I would always yeah. get the rashes. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's right. tough. Let's put gold bond yeah, on. That's tough. Sit in front of a fan naked with calamine lotion in case I got poison ivy. Damn. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Nothing else though. Phone. I'm, I'm simple. Phone. What about that's you? Uh, tier three. I do like the phone, so I'll, I'll put the phone out there. Tier three phone. Uh, tier two, um, uh, electrolytes because I'm a big cramper, mm -hmm. and so I would always be taking my water bottles and always be filling them up. But my tier one, because we did stay in a hotel, was uh, lotion. Ah, <laughs> oh, bro, y'all are ridiculous. Bro, you, I mean, <laughs> God, there's only so man. much time you have. You got what time did you get up this morning? Uh, 6.45. 6.45. Uh -huh. And then you're in the building. You've just finished practice. And it's not even noon yet. Right. You get back, what time do you get back? What time are you done? Yeah. True. I got back last night around 7.40. So we would get back at like 8.39. Yeah, that's tough. And I would take those 15 minutes and it would be me and myself and I. In a hotel or home? <laughs> <laughs> we did stay in a hotel. Yeah, we have to stay in a hotel for like the first until the, the second. <laughs> the first the of the I mean... All right, no, I'm not knocking it, bro. You got to do it here. Yeah, we got to you, you do what you got to do. You can't tell me you walk into a hotel room and you're not like, <laughs> this is the safest I'll ever be in this yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to take care of- some alone time. Yeah, take care of business. 100%. So that's my- Away that's, games. My tier one is lotion. Oh, maybe a necessity is- uh, Some yeah, nicotine. Yeah, Lucy, yeah, Lucy, yeah, Lucy, yeah, Lucy. Yeah, Lucy, Lucy. Gotta be, gotta be. Stressful out there The only thing I feel like I would add is Normatec. I feel like I was always packing Normatecs everywhere I went. Normatec, Xbox- it's a good one. Lotion's a great one. But Normatech, <laughs> I'll start with Gold Bond, Normatech, Xbox. That so would I mine. would never bring the Xbox. Because my brain, I'd be up till two, like 2 a.m. And then the next day, I'm screwed. Yeah, but it's like, it's especially important like for an off day. Off day is when it's a big Xbox. Yeah, like the big, boys big yeah. running the hallways. Yeah. <laughs> you know and what it, I mean? They, no, they, they're all good points. All good points. It's just me. If I walked into a room... Like now the lotion's in the corner and I got to play the Xbox for <laughs> four or five hours. Like I got, your snack I got tradition. Table. I got, I got stuff I got to figure out. <laughs> Guys are wondering why you're not sitting with them at, for snack at night and you're just yeah. packing it to go to get up to your room. Right. Immediately go play. Imagine trying to play, trying to be in camp right now with CFP 25 going on. I know. I know. Cause I love, I love that game right now. <laughs> I know. What, uh, you obviously saying congratulations, the biggest, the highest paid to alignment in history as of right now. What is, we love to ask this question, and, and please humor us. What has been your biggest splurge purchase since signing that contract? Or maybe when you got drafted in the first round. I mean, you did, you are like the man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess, uh, let's start with the rookie one. Um, a house, but like, that's, I guess, standard. Didn't need a roof over my head, but a car. I got like, I got the TRX. Okay. I rocked that bad boy, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, that's my baby right there. 
And then this big contract. Honestly, not much other than uh, jewelry. Yeah. Big jewelry guy? guy. Yeah, not me, but uh, for the significant other. So. Yeah, you just got married. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Was Appreciate it, what, two that. weeks ago? Yeah. And, uh, no honeymoon. Not yet. We're going to wait. So. Where y'all going to go, man? Uh, I don't know. Bali's calling my name a little bit. But we'll see. I don't know. It's not for sure. That's just an idea. I couldn't right even now. pick that out of the map if I if I wanted to. Me neither. That's the thing. You just want to go and just, just culture there, yourself. Yeah. Exactly. I love just that. Enjoy man. the vibes. We appreciate you coming, man. Thank you I so much for having me. It's a pain me. in the ass. So just for taking a little bit of time out of your days means a lot. So we appreciate you. Thank you guys, and appreciate it, man. Appreciate that, bro. Look at that. Punctual. Punctual. We interrupt this episode to bring you something that I really need to get on in a hurry, and that is Grammarly. You write across multiple platforms and places during your workday. So deliver constant high quality communication everywhere is key. Grammarly, Grammarly is an AI writing partner that helps you get the work done faster with high quality writing for better projects, proposals, presentations, and more. Better writing means stronger impact. 96% of Grammarly users report that Grammarly helps their craft more impactful writing, helps them craft more impactful writing. Get personalized writing suggestions based on your audience goals and context. For me, pretty obvious, right? I got a, a very small pool when it comes to my grammar. I think I'd really <laughs> dip into this little pool right here and have a little fun. Uh, get AI writing support that works where you work. Sign up and download for free at grammarly.com forward slash podcast. That's G R A. M M A R L Y dot com slash podcast. Easier said, done. Let's get back to this episode. Two hundred balls a day caught in the jugs. Correct. Did you do it today? Yeah, yeah, before practice. Sorry, before practice. Before practice? Before practice, yeah. All right. You had an incre you've had a I'm on episode six. You've had an okay. incredible showing so far on Thank the receiver. You. Appreciate it. I really respect it. And I'm super curious what it was like growing up in the household with your old man. Um, honestly, for me, it was normal. Like that's the, that's the life I, I grew up, you know, knowing, um, him, you know, being the guy he is, everyone sees the way he acts, you know, him telling me to drink a Coke at halftime. I'm used to it. I'm getting those texts all the time. Um, you know, the sayings that he has, I'm used to it. Um, him, you know, being like our trainers. Um, but you know, outside of sports and being our trainer he was awesome dad so it yeah. was it was a good time when we had a uh, cmc on yeah. he would say that uh his dad ed mccaffrey like he would get grounded if he got arm tackled in youth football did you have anything like that with your old man because i would assume he was pretty hard on right. you guys yeah no i didn't get no i wouldn't say i got grounded or you know uh, punished for anything it was just like you know if you had a bad game getting that car ride home is always hell it's like that's the last thing you want to do after the game, after a bad game, is yeah. you, you know you got to get in the car with your dad and go home, and he's going to tell you everything you did wrong and what you got to fix and how you got to be better. And so those are, the, I would say that's what I dreaded most, just the car ride home, uh, or we'd go after, you know, after practice, go back to the park by our house and get more drills in, just keep working on the stuff that I wasn't doing right. So I was used to it, but as a kid, it's like, here, all right, here we go. Like I got to go back to the. You don't know any out. other way. That's all I knew. With, uh, with your old man, like obviously him being a part of like your strength, your coaching, all that stuff. At what point were you like, hey, dad, like I'm a senior at USC. Like I need to, <laughs> I have coaches for this now. Right. Uh, in college, it was, it was a little different because I wasn't with him. So that was the first time I wasn't with my dad, mm -hmm. you know, almost every day. So, but I went to USC. So it was like an hour away from, from his house. So he'd be a lot, at a lot of the practices. Obviously, he couldn't come to all of them because some practices aren't open to family. But he would come to a lot of them, um, and you know he would still coach me up. He kind of let me do my thing more when I got to college. But if he saw anything that he didn't like, he was either telling me, texting me, calling me, whatever it was. <laughs> um, but even still to this day in the NFL, he's still, you know, texting me, calling me, you know, giving me his thoughts and opinions. Um, for me, I you know I respect it. Um, obviously, you know he's never played at this level, so some of the things it's hard for me to explain to him. Um, cause like I tell other people, he's like, I want you to get the ball first, second, third down every play. Like you should be getting the ball. I'm like, it doesn't work like that. I got to run routes, got to run guys off and things like that. So, uh, he just wants me to, you know, keep going, keep going. And I get it, but, uh, I love him to death. How is his exposure as far as like the Netflix receiver and all that? How has he been received by the public? 
Uh, people love him, bro. Yeah. I'm in the locker room. I got teammates not even talking about me. They're talking about my dad. Man, I love your dad, bro. He's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I got Michael Badger telling me he's looking at all the podcasts. He's keeping up with him. Like, he loves his sayings. I tell everyone, like, bro, I'm I'm used to it. Like, every day. I can tell you what he's about to say before he even says it. Like, mm-hmm. I know exactly what he, what, what type of guy he is. Um, but the people love him. And they love, you know, I think he's he's raw. He's honest. He's he's himself, no matter if the cameras are or if it's not. And I think people, you know, respect that. But I think his personality is just one of one. What's his go-to quote? Like, what is the number one quote of his? Um, go-to quote. I mean, as a kid, there were so many. I feel like he always, you know, reminded us about, you know, dis- decision making. He would tell us something. He he would tell us, you know, you can either listen to me or listen to yourself. But if I were you, I would listen to me. That's something he always told us growing up as kids. Um, I mean, there's so many. Uh, you know, shoot for the stars because the bottom's overcrowded. Um, I mean, he has so many sayings. Then he has these little, like, one-offs. I don't know if you, you guys have seen our podcast, but it's like if a situation arises and something looks too good to be true, be careful. All candy looks good before you taste it. Like, there's so many little sayings he has that yeah, he always rips nice out one. on that. Juicy. Yeah. Um, but I'm used to it. I mean, I, I picked up some, some from him, too. You brought the podcast. How long have you guys been doing a podcast? Uh, we've been doing it going, this is going into our third year now. Yeah. Yeah. And is it, do you guys do it weekly or just during the season? Uh, during the season, yeah. Every, we record on Tuesdays and it drops on Wednesdays. Mm. Yeah. What's it called? It's called the St. Brown Podcast. St. Brown Podcast. Yeah, Go yeah. check it out. Subscribe yeah. on rate all channels. Stars. Yeah. Rate five stars. Drop comments. Right. Dude, Um, I love the way you play. I feel like you play pissed off, which also is, I guess I'll use the word. Like unexpected, you're a five star cat. You go to USC. Uh-huh. You leave early and declare for the draft. You get drafted. Wh- which round Fourth again? Round. Fourth round. Yep. But where do you find? Where do you feel like you found this chip on your shoulder to play the way that you play? Uh, I think for me it was. I've always been like that ever since you know I was a kid. I've just been super competitive. Like I've always and I hated losing. Like that's the biggest thing for me is whatever I do, I don't want to lose, especially if I'm playing sports because I love. I love sports. I loved them growing up, basketball, football, soccer, everything. I hated losing. And so when I got to high school, uh, I played varsity as a sophomore. And I played a little, got hurt, broke my foot. And then I, my brother was balling out. He was a junior, going crazy. I was like, man, I can't let my brother outdo me. So then he, you know, next year I'm a junior. He's a senior. I was like, I got to do better than him. He was going crazy. He was like, had like 15 touchdowns, over 1,000 yards. And I was super happy for him. But I was like, just me being me, like being around my brothers all the time. I got to do better than my brother. So going into my junior year, I was like, I got to do better than him. So we both, you know, had great years. Um, I might have had a little more touch, like a few more stats than him, but it was like neck and neck. He ended up leaving and going to Stanford. And then, you know, I got my senior year at Modern Day. And at that time, I was like a five-star or whatever, like you said. And Won the state title. Yeah, we won everything. Uh, one of the best teams ever in high school football. Um, <laughs> but we won the whole thing. You know, did all the camps and Nike opening and everything. And being at those camps, I just love one-on-ones. That was the biggest thing for me was doing one-on-ones, you against the DB, what a quarterback, everyone's watching. And I just I just love the the competition aspect of, you know, me versus you. And then ever since, I feel like, you know, high school going into college, I wanted to play as a freshman. So I was out there as a freshman trying to dog people, whatever I could do, running people over, blocking, trying to make every catch, taking every rep if I could. Um, and that just kind of translated all the way. And then I got drafted late. I was mad already, got here. Um, and same thing over again. I wanted to go dominate. Yeah. There's something about like football players, even when you're having the success you do, they like in a, in a good way, like delusion of making, being like these people don't believe me. So I'm gonna have a chip on my shoulder Right. with, uh, your brother going to Stanford and you guys playing against each other in the Pac-12, the, the conference formerly known yep. as the Pac-12. Did you ever think about going to Stanford? I did. It was between Notre Dame, Stanford, and USC. So I had my oldest went to Notre Dame, mm-hmm. middle went to Stanford, and then I went to USC. But coming out, I was like, I love, I always loved Stanford because it was an educational, smart school. Um, I just love Coach Shaw and everyone. And then Notre Dame, I didn't really know much about Notre Dame. My brother took a visit and I went with him and I was like, this is pretty cool, like tradition, everything. The location is a little... Eh, but like once you get there, it's like its own world. Um, the games are amazing, electric. Um, so went to Notre Dame, went on a visit, love Notre Dame. But I was like, 
he ended up declaring as I was coming out of high school. So if he would have stayed, I think, one more year, I probably would have went to Notre Dame to play mm -hmm. with my older brother because uh, I've never played with him. But he ended up declaring to go to the NFL. I was like, you know what? Notre Dame is cool. He just left, though. Stanford, they don't really throw the ball. I love the school, but they don't throw as much as I would like. Um, and USC is close to home. Um, and I want to keep my talent. Yeah. Keep my talent at home. You uh, you mentioned being pissed off being drafted late. There's a, You have a list of receivers that got drafted ahead of you. What are the names on those lists? Uh, you know, I would recite those again for you guys, but you guys probably heard it too many times. You guys are sick of it now, so I can't do that again for you guys. <laughs> now, when you were coming out, I know a couple sites like PFF, uh, Draft Network, they projected you in like second or third round and talked about you being a pure second string player. Do you ever think, do you ever remember these things now that you've had the success that you do? Uh, you know, I wouldn't say like back, you know, coming out, obviously, you know, when I first started, when I first got here, um, and I started making some plays, yeah. But like now, is I feel like I don't really pay too much attention to that. I mean, that's their job. They got to make media has to make you know predictions, whatever. That's their job. That's what they have to do. I don't blame them. I don't think they're the best at it, but it is what it is. Um, but now I'm at a point in my career where it's like I'm worried about. Obviously, I want to play good. Every player wants to play good, but I feel like we just want to win a Super Bowl. That's the biggest thing. Whatever it takes for me as a team to lead whatever it is, to be a good teammate, to make more plays if I have to, um, go out there and go be Super Bowl champs. That's the biggest thing I feel like. Um, we know we can do as a team. We feel like we got the guys in our, our in our building, on our roster, the coaches. Um, we've been here for a while now. And I mean, we got so close last year uh, that I mean, we just gotta, we just gotta push a little harder. Mm -hmm. If when Will Will's already talked about the intensity you play with and everything, the the competitive nature, when you're in the locker room with guys, in the wide receiver room is a dramatic room. Yeah. It can be very like finicky that way. When you see guys maybe not putting in the same effort as you, how do you approach it from a leadership standpoint? Um, you know, sometimes it's tough for me. I feel like I don't want to. I don't want to, the teammates to think I'm, a, you know, being tough on them or I don't like them. So that's kind of something that I've trying to been trying to battle right now is when to speak up and when not to. Because um, I'm not, I'm not a guy that's a hoorah guy. I'm a go out there. I don't say much. I like to work. I'd rather show you better than I can tell you. But you know, if something is out of line and I feel like I need to speak up, I'll speak up. But you know, if someone's not working hard on the field, um, I feel like with our practice, it's kind of hard not to work hard when everyone's working hard you'll kind of be like the the odd man now if you're not doing the right thing. So mm -hmm. I feel like our coaches and teammates, everyone does a great job of pushing each other. So that's not really a problem we have here. But like I said, if something is really out of line, then I'll speak up. But for the most part, I just like to show the guys how I work and, you know, let my play do the talking. Do you find yourself uh, like focusing on developing into that, like more of a vocal leader now that like when you're a guy, like obviously your voice carries more weight. Right. Yeah. Like I said, it's something I've been working on because uh, – my whole life, I haven't really been a vocal leader. Um, that's not something that I thrive in. Um, you know, I feel like some guys talk too much, and that's really that's not the guy I want to be. Um, I want to be a guy that when I do say something, you know, people are listening. Um, so it just hasn't been me, but it's something I definitely need to work on and get better at is being more vocal. But like I said, I don't want to be a redundant as someone that's speaking too much. Right. That's the worst for me. So. Um, like I'll speak up if I have to, but something has to really be going wrong for me to speak up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, USC going to the Big Ten this year. How do you feel the boys in California <laughs> stack up against a real Big Ten ball? You know, I love the move. We're not we're not worried about the Big Ten though. We're, well, let's we're, unpack that for a second because you know Coast. the national champions. You guys got to take a lot, hey, a lot of ball. long flights, a lot, lot of long flights, flights. and all colder Michigan, weather. All Michigan wants to do is run it. Like just pack the box. They can't throw. Make them throw. We'll be good. Every team they played against did that, it's and they good. lost to every. They, they Harbaugh's all lost. gone now. What, they lost eight guys. Who? They lost eight dudes. Right. Michigan did. Yeah. Well, actually, they lost fifteen guys because they all got drafted. Even it's guys. Over. Even guys. It's guys, over. It's it's over. What are you it's talking over. about? It's we done. just reload. What's USC doing? Don't worry. We got Lincoln Riley. It's going to be. Do you guys? Right. Um, do you guys promote painting your fingernails at uh, in California? <laughs> Is that like uh, a big thing? No, we don't promote anything. If you want to do it, go ahead. You know, I love you. that. Yeah, that's a good PC answer right. by you. So you guys, you. you guys are gonna run the Big Ten, no problem. I don't know if we're gonna run it, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. I know yeah. Michigan's done. Like they had their one shot, it's over with. <laughs> that is a wild, it's done. Wild I know. statement I know coming I from you. Detroit, like half of your fans I, I are Michigan SC. fans. No, they're Detroit Lions <laughs> fans. And if you're not a USC fan, there's a problem. 
<laughs> Are you gonna go to the game September twenty first? I wish. Oh, we have we actually have an away game. That so, sucks, dude. Because Bummer. that would be it would have been lit. For you to see that kind of experience would be unbelievable. You've probably never seen anything like that. What kind that. of experience are you talking about? The, I don't know, the biggest stadium in North America, the third biggest in the world. Yeah, I actually took an official to Michigan when I was coming out of high school. Michigan, Michigan State, don't, raining. Don't do it. Crazy. Michigan State won. I'm like, I can't go here. It doesn't well, even that? get that loud. What well, year was that? Uh, that was 2017. They won? Bro, Michigan State. He said they won? <laughs> Raining like crazy. I'm from I'm from Southern California. I'm like, this rain is ridiculous, number one. I couldn't catch a ball on this. Then I'm like, and they lost. Vibes were low. Recruiting coordinator wasn't feeling nothing. I'm, I'm good, bro. Take was the stadium home. loud? No. <laughs> no. Why are you doing this, man? Not We're at supposed all. to be like gilding, getting a rapport together. Right I now. love it. I love the back and forth. Not I can't all. wait till September 20th. Keep your DMs open. I will be there. I will, <laughs> I will be, be there right after now. that game. I will be DM ready. Right now. <laughs> yes. Dude, what, uh, what did it mean for you to be the youngest receiver to uh, amass a thousand yards? I think it was eight days before Calvin Johnson. Um, it was cool. I mean, I mean, that's a do that's a it is that's yeah, dope. That's not just cool. That's awesome. Right. I mean, Calvin's arguably one of the best receivers to ever play. So, for me, like being in you know playing for the Lions, everything you do is compared to Calvin, which is it's great, but it's also tough. Like he's the best, one of the best to ever do it. So. It's an honor to be, you know, even considered, you know, being the same conversation as him, but he did it for so long. And I feel like, I mean, I see pictures on Twitter of him when he was playing the Saints. It's him on the goal line with literally two DBs on him. Like you don't see that anymore, anywhere. Like that just shows you how, you know, how dominant he was. So just to, you know, being, like I said, in the same com conversation as him is, is an honor, but I got to keep going, man. He was, he was a, he was a beast. What receivers do you keep your eye on now? Like in your in your brain, who's like the top three? Um, you're not gonna get me on a top three. I'm not gonna give you no top three. Um, but guys that I podcast, like to watch, podcast, okay, podcast, um, it's polished. Guys that I like to, I, I watch a bunch of guys. Honestly, I mean, I can go down the list. Um, can we do a top three guys you like to watch. <laughs> top three guys I like to watch. Uh, we can do that. Like if you find, yeah, 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 we find yeah, a lane. Yeah. We find a lane. Top three guys. This is not my top three, by the way. But the guys I like to watch, Devonte Adams. Love watching him. Um, I'm going to go Keenan Allen. Last one. Let's just go. I'm going to go Justin Jefferson since he's in our division. We play him twice mm -hmm. a year. We watch, we play the same team. So we get to see on film, you know, a lot of the stuff that they do. And he's a lot on the tape a lot. So he's a, he's nice. It's his top three. Top three. It's Not my top, top three. three. It's his top, top three. three wide receivers. I'm Ross St. Brown. <laughs> uh, thinks Jamar Chase is overrated. Incorrect. <laughs> what, uh, what What? fun question? We should have we do, one more minute. Should we do a segment? Should we do shout out for shout out real quick? Or are we holding that? There is a twisted question. A twisted question. That Sherm was thinking of. We interrupt this episode to bring you Twisted Tea with the Twisted Question. A refreshing hard iced tea made with real brewed tea and 5% alcohol. Full of flavor and very refreshing. Twisted Tea goes down smooth. There is no carbonation, which makes it easy to drink all day long. Twisted Tea feels fun and celebrates extreme fandom on game day. It is the perfect alcohol or beverage for game day, whether tailgating in the parking lot, watching in a bar, or watching with friends at home. Twisted Tea is there to turn up your game day. Keep it twisted with the boys and go grab a refreshing Twisted Tea today. What was the twisted question? It sure. was, are you familiar with the, uh, was it American Ninja Warrior? American Ninja Warrior? Yeah. yeah. All right. Say you need to get through the course uh -huh. and tap the button on the other side yeah. to save the world. Yeah. Who in the locker room would you trust the most to accomplish the American Ninja Warrior obstacle course? Ooh, to save the world. It's a great question, Sherm. Do I know what kind of obstacles there are? Like. The main does course. Weight, does weight, speed, does that stuff matter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like you have to be fast? I think so. Like, it, it, I mean, it's a jungle gym out there. Mm. I was going to say Panay. Balance, I was gonna speed. Say Panay. I don't think Panay would. Okay. I think we're all dead. Yeah. I think right, we're, we're all, all dead. dead. Let me go like Gibbs else. might be, would be a good one. Ah, you got to climb, you, Gibbs, you got to climb, you got balance, mm -hmm. jumping, timing. Right, right. Let me, hold on. Aiden Hutchinson, but he's white? Like... <laughs> <laughs> he said, he's I don't too think big, you can right? trust a white guy. You can't trust a white guy no. with, the, with the fate of the world. He'd be in too an big. Athletic sport. He's There's big. no shot. Khalif Raymond might have a shot. Oh, Ooh. Khalif. But, he's a dog. But, but yeah, he he is, bro. You have to dog. run up the ramp. He is shorter. He's fast, though. He's got he a little is. spring to point. him. He's got a little explosiveness to him. Yeah. 
Well, this is not our. We don't have to for answer sure. this question. Yeah, it could be you. I, I, no, I would no, say besides you. me. Um, Khalif is great, but you already said that, so I'm gonna go someone else. Um, can I do David Montgomery? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, that's a great. That's he's a great built goal. like a running back, creative yeah. player in NCAA 14. Sneaky really. pick in fantasy too for everybody listening. Beast. They don't throw the ball. At him. He doesn't catch a lot of balls. <laughs> you don't need to. You can run the rock with that run motherfucker, the rock with bro. Him, but you, if you're playing PPR league, you I don't, I don't know. If that's I had him last year. He was nice. He's going crazy touchdowns. He's going he like crazy. 12, how many touchdowns? Did he have? Like twelve or thirteen. Yes. After week one of the season last year, I was done with him. I had him <laughs> over. He was. <laughs> no. He was point five. What do you mean you were done with, with David? I needed him yeah. to catch the ball once. Why do you need him to catch it? Because that's what I bet on. Oh, you're betting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking, we don't do that. Uh, no, but I know, we're talking but about fantasy. But I'm, yeah. I'm bringing this into a different world. Got you, got you. No, no, no. Do you play fantasy? No, I do not. You can play. Uh, you can play fantasy. I don't play though. Okay, I'm yeah, sorry. No, you're good. that Michigan stuff really bothered you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you mad about that Michigan stuff? It's all right, dude. Uh, go blue, fantasy. and we appreciate you so much for coming on. Seriously, love seeing your success. Appreciate it. It's been amazing. Check those DMs. Same Brown podcast. I'll be there. Yep. You guys. Hey, matter of fact, what's the game? What's it? September twenty first. Yeah. Taylor, you should go on the St. Brown pod that week after. If you guys want to talk, we can talk. Absolutely. Are you sure? But come correct. Do. You better come correct. What are you talking about? Okay. I, I have the 2024 national champs on my back. You or the the team last year? Are you part were you part of the team? No, but I am. Uh, <laughs> I was just wondering. Would you all would you all win at the USC? What did we win? Well, yeah. How Nothing. many Heismans do you guys have? Oh, okay. I was just wondering. How many do you have? I, was, that <laughs> I know that for sure. Reggie just got his back to us. We're yeah. feeling great. I mean, you guys in 2000s, for real, that's the team to go to. Mm -hmm. But it's the 20s. It's fine. I don't want to do this. I think this You don't want to do We it's don't want to do this. Like Michigan. <laughs> I'll see you on your podcast the week of. I'll see you September so 21st is Saturday. That week. Three days after that, the 24th. We'll see you. All right. Okay. There we go. We got yeah. one. Done. Right before you leave, top three locker room guys in Detroit. Locker room guys, what like uh, locker room vibes? vibes. Dude, who you who like you get it when after practice before whatever you're excited to go in the locker room? Like, and man, see. Graham Glasgow is awesome. He's got yeah, a touch of the tism, but he's awesome. awesome. I'm going Jamar Jefferson. Okay, I love my running backs, um, but he's gonna, I'm gonna take Jamar Jefferson, who's next? Khalif Raymond. Mm. Who else is next to me? Vibes. Kirby Joseph. I love it. Friendships just got divided if the boys listen to this pod. Right. No question. We appreciate you coming on, Yeah, man. thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it. Enjoy camp. Yes, sir. You are the man. Thank you. Uh, are we rolling right now? Yeah. Some people might not know you for is that you're a fan of Beer Games Championship of the World, I heard. Yeah, yeah. Well, as soon as I heard my teammate uh, Graham Glasgow was participating, I had, to, I had to check in and see how it went. I heard you won a, a bid for 2025. CN, are you in? Uh, I have to check my calendar. <laughs> you don't know the date, so there's no. We don't. Hey, but it's smart that he but, says check the calendar no, with all the shit that happened. And if I've, and I've, if I'm off and I have time, I'd like a bid. Yeah. How do you think you'd fare in those, that type of situation? Not great. I'm, a, I'm an okay beer drinker. I'm not like a like an all star, but I'd have fun. I, your, I need like a good teammate. What yeah. was your best? Like, let me let me and Graham show up. We might do some damage. You definitely should get an O lineman. Right. They're they the all ones. they all perform very well. I'm good at flip cup. I can do beer pong. Like the chugging thing, I'd get smoked, but I, I'd do it, but I'd get smoked. What do you think you could put, uh, how fast do you think you could put down 32, 36 ounces? 36 ounces. 36 yeah, ounces. I saw you guys doing that. Uh, what'd you do in like five, six seconds? Yeah, he's, yeah, five, yeah, four, he's two. an impressive yeah. cat. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd probably, I don't know, 12 to 15, 20 seconds. I don't right, know. So I'm we're in the same category? Yeah. We're in the same tier? Yeah, I, was a 13, I think, 13, one. honestly, hearing this like, lack of confidence, I don't think you're smoking them because you get better every year. Thank you. You, you look like the type of guy who can just like kind of open your throat and that thing just just let it right flow, to your baby. stomach. Yes, I can't absolutely. do that. It's a it's been a gift my whole entire life. There you go. Being able to open <laughs> oh, your throat. There you go. <laughs> it's been a special special. Good for gift. you. Yeah, it was fun when and when Graham texted me and said that you were you were interested in doing it. I looked at my phone. I was like, so excited, and then I didn't text him back at all. Uh -huh. And so he actually just called me out on it after practice today. Yeah, yeah, he's sensitive. He's a sensitive boy. He's very sensitive. He is, but the best part about Graham is he's consistently himself through every situation. A thousand percent. He doesn't change. He's one of my favorite teammates of all time. Is he really? And don't tell him I said that, but yeah, he's one of my favorite teammates. Of if all you time. were to give me off the top of your head, not putting a whole lot of thought into it, so we have an insurance <sighs> policy, what would be your top three teammates of all time? Of all time? Because you've had you've had some good teammates. I mean, I'm going to lean towards like the funniest guys I've been around, and Graham's one of them. Smart. Um, Graham's one of them, probably. Uh, like Tavon Austin used to kill me. 
I was with him for a couple of years in LA. Um, shoot favorite. I mean, that's hard. <sighs> Gosh, lose a lot of friends, man. I know. Tavon was funny as hell. I love Tavon. So I'll put him as, as two or three. And then, you know, D- David Montgomery makes me laugh a lot here. Yeah. yeah. Is he yeah. a jokester on the team? Yeah. He's hilarious. He, he's funny, but like very subtle humor and, and really funny. Yeah. Should we ask him what we asked, uh, an A? The tier talk? No, about, uh, coach Campbell. Yeah, sure. He's such a beloved character. Everybody is it beloved or beloved? Beloved. Um, everybody loves him. Any clip you see, he's a football guy through and through. Uh, we asked, what is your biggest pet peeve with him? Ooh, gosh. Um, you know, I'll just I'll, I'll toe the company line here. Just how consistent he is. <laughs> oh, no. So Panay oh, was God. saying in team meetings, he'll get long-winded. And uh, then he'll pause and take a break for like a minute. Yeah. Three minutes long. Sure, that's a good answer. That's a better answer than I gave. He's just so dang consistent, he's hard to keep up with, you know? <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to get anything out of him. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> that is tough. That's a great politically correct answer. Yeah, it's true. But, yeah, I wish I had something better. What I, I want, I definitely want to dive into, like, obviously L.A., coming here, and then the playoff game you guys had. But, like, starting with the fan bases. Yeah. What is the biggest difference you notice from, like, this Midwest fan base compared to that West Coast fan base? Yeah, it's it's entirely different. Um, obviously, you played at Michigan, so you have a little bit of a feel for it. Like the people around here, just live, breathe, die football. Um, and in LA, there's just a lot of things to do that aren't football, and whether it's other sports or or the beach or you know going to dinner, a million things. But around here, man, it's it's football, and we got the whole state is Lions fans, and in California, obviously, there's a bunch of teams, so um, it's entirely different, and it's a lot of fun to play for. Dude, what was the ride like when you guys are bringing that division title here? Fun, fun, really fun. And it really started in like. 2022 when we were able to like kind of turn it around a little bit we had that thanksgiving game at home against uh the bills is kind of when i first saw the stadium kind of flip and like oh this is what it could be like if we kept winning and kept making plays and and we did through that year and then obviously last year it's been insane it's been so fun the the stadium has got to be one of the loudest stadiums in the league now and um how much they care and and how much they bring it. it's fun it felt like basically everybody was rooting for you guys especially when you won the division town you saw the the stadium's reaction yeah i feel like everybody else around the country was buying into the lions yeah it dude it felt good i i, I wouldn't have known until the off season i had a lot of people being like hey man my team was out of it so i was rooting for you guys <laughs> like, all right thanks um but yeah our, our fans deserve it man they've been through a lot here and um we were able to give them a little slice of joy last year and uh weren't able to finish it off like we wanted to but it was a it was a fun ride they mean to the uh, playing the Rams in the playoffs. First meeting, uh, Stafford's coming back. He's getting booed in the building. It's a, essentially it's a get back game for both of you guys, because <laughs> everyone who goes plays for a team, they they leave, go somewhere else. Ben Jones is always the guy that comes to mind. He played for the Texans, came to the Titans, and every yeah. time we played the Texans, it just meant a little bit more. Like, what was that week like for you leading up to that, with everything on the line? Yeah, it was. It was certainly there was emotions with it, and that was the battle for me was to to kind of fight those and and focus on what was important, um, and winning the game. And and that became easy really when I just thought about like what that game meant to this city, kind of what we had just talked about, and these fans. Like, sure, it was important for me, and there was a lot of storylines for myself. But um, these guys, you know, around here, they, they, we haven't won a playoff game in 30 something years. It was so much bigger than me, and that was easy for me to like focus on that instead, and take a lot of the you know. Uh, pressure or whatever off of off of my performance in the game and just go out there and play. Does that kind of happen like once you just kind of complete your first pass and get into it? It did because I would assume. It- yeah, pregame was weird and like the, the, the chanting and like all that. There was like a lot of stuff going on and like you know I've seen a lot of my former teammates and and a lot right. of my good friends, former coaches, and you know you're gonna see them, but like until you see them and have those moments, you're like, all right, I gotta go, go through that and, and see these guys. And um, but yeah, once the first snap and through the first completion, it was it was all go from there. What was it feeling like being traded? In the situation, you, you, I mean, you took the Rams to the Super Bowl. You guys had a lot of success. Yeah. And then they're essentially, the Lions are giving up Stafford and they're, they're taking you. How was, what was your like thought process going through? Was there a morning process at all? Yeah, there was, it was, it was certainly um, a shock at first. You know, there wasn't much conversation had with me and I've, I've, I've told this story a hundred times, but I, I, I there, there was just no re- true communication and, and there's been a lot of, um, a lot of talk since then, which has mended some of that, but um, there wasn't much communication, so it came as a shock. And then, you know, as soon as as soon as I talked to Brad and Dan, which was that night, it, it flipped very quickly. 
into like, wow, what an opportunity I have here to be on the ground floor of something so special and um, something that could be, you know, what we hope to build this into, which is Super Bowl champ. And uh, we feel like we've had some success and, and done a lot of that. But the the opportunity piece that quickly came in after talking to those guys uh, completely changed my mentality. It all, I was just going to say it always sucks when you 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 finally taste like the teeth of the business because right. it almost doesn't matter right. what level like you're you were a high paid quarterback for LA they were bought into you right. like even being a, a a lower tier guy not getting re-signed by your team there's always like once you taste that right. or you get cut and you realize how much of a business it is and how much lack of conversation actually happens right. kind of like you're kind of like shunned by it I think it, it's made me uh less naive you know, right. I think I think when I was younger, like it was like, oh, they love me. You know, we we signed the extension. You know, here we go. We're gonna be together for 15 years, and and everyone thinks that, right? And and uh, you know, eventually that that changes. And I think um, it's a lot of my perspective to be much better on what it is, and the relationships are important, and you and it is family, and you love your guys. But at the end of the day, you do know that there are powers that be that will do what is in their in their minds best for the team. Yeah. With um, one thing I've noticed being at at this facility and during practice, a lot of people are saying Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. And usually a team that has a success, success the way you did, it's all about like, everyone's kind of afraid to say right. they want to win a championship. What right. makes it so easy in this building to make it so like freely said? Because a lot of times we it's tasted like Voldemort. It. Yeah, we, I know, I know what you mean. We tasted it last year. Mm -hmm. I think last year, before we had won our first playoff game in 30 years, there was like, hey, we need to get into the playoffs and win the playoff game, which was absolutely the goal last year. And, and it's still the goal now. But I think, with that being said, we, we, we do know we are capable of more, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and we'll be extremely disappointed if we're unable to accomplish either of those goals. But it is win the division, get in the dance, win a playoff game, you know, certainly control your home destiny and then and then win a Super Bowl. And we're not afraid to say that, like you said. And I think it's because, you know, we did taste it last year. We were right there. We had we had played a good game against San Francisco. They played just a little bit better and um, were able to beat us. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, you guys haven't tasted uh, the playoffs for 30 years. Right. Last year, let's just say you get in the first round of the playoffs and you guys won the division, but you lose the first round of the playoffs. Are you still saying, hey, successful season? Like we've Last got a year? monkey off of our back. Yeah. Like, no. You're not thinking that? Gosh, no. No, it was win winning a playoff game. Winning a playoff game. Yeah, they had been to the playoffs here in the last, I don't know how many years when it was the last time, but um, since I've been here, we hadn't been, but we it was winning a playoff game. Mm -hmm. And sure, we were able to get that monkey off our back, but once we, you know, won that first playoff game, it was like, let's go win the Super Bowl. Right. And that was our goal for those next following three weeks. And we came up short. And, and so then the last six months has been, let's go win a Super Bowl. Would you, uh, would you cut your dick off for a Super Bowl? <laughs> Man. Hard hitting question. I, 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 you know, I, I know that's what Vrabel said he would do. <laughs> I'd like to, I'd like to think that I have enough, uh, life ability to do it without doing that. <laughs> yeah. I like the belief in myself that I don't have to do that, so I'm going to say no because I'm going to do it without having to do that. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Well, how about a pinky toe? Ooh. I don't know if I'd be you able. To, knew you would I, I wouldn't be able year. to play after that. Like, but you know, over. you get a Super Bowl. No, because again, like I got my pinky toe, I can I can win I can win a few more. Yeah. Modern medicine technology <laughs> these put days. Put it sew it back on. Yeah. If you told me your I can level sew of it, income, I can sew it back on. Pinky toe. Yeah, yeah, no you problem. Figure it can out. I sew it back on? Yes. Then sure. All right. And then I can keep playing. All right. And I'll go hopefully win more. I love that. Man. Those are my questions. That's all you have? That's all I had. Do you want I'm sewing the pinky toe back on, just to <laughs> yeah, be clear. So yeah, you're yeah. sewing the team pinky toe back <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, not, not, not the other deal. We interrupt this episode to bring you Duke Cannon. This shout out, no free shout out segment is sponsored by the boys at Duke Cannon. It is the off season. That means it's time to elevate your game by working harder and smelling better with our boys from Duke Cannon. Throw away your old body wash and deodorant because you smell like a, a JV locker room. Upgrade to Duke Cannon for a varsity level grooming routine. Duke Cannon scents are elite and their products are made for hardworking dudes. As always, the boys have a special code just for the tier ones. Use code tier one. That's T-I-E are in the number one on dukecannon.com for 15% off your first order. Duke Cannon, work harder, smell better. Here's shout out, no free shout outs with Jared Goff. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with Buster Voice, but we have segments and a segment is called shout out, no free shout out. Okay. And usually it's just like yeah. the simple yep. pleasures in life. Like, uh, you know, someone brought up a good one the other day. It was like at school and it's the cold water fountain. Right. Like that's a shout out, no free shout out. But we're going to get a little more specific because we are at training camp. So I want to hear right. shout out, no free shout outs to like little pleasures of training camp. We can right, go first, great. break the ice a little bit, but I wanted you to I got get, a good I one. put that in your mind. I thought about it today. Did you really? Sorry if I'm, if this is, and this is so on the nose for busting with the boys, but like 
the downtime, the in between meetings. Mm. Like coaches are watching film, we're down, we're either eating lunch or we're just doing nothing, just hanging. Yeah. Like with the boys. And I know it's like so on the nose, but like today earlier we had you know a half hour to kill in the quarterback room, just kinda hanging, talking, chatting, doing nothing. And that those are the best times, I think. Camaraderie. Can't beat camaraderie. Can't beat it. And this is when it's built. And I do think Dan is aware of that and, and knows we have downtime and hopes we're building that camaraderie. I love it. I'm gonna say when you get a surprise uh, practice off the entire team. Like you do, you do the morning practice and they cancel walkthrough in the afternoon. Yeah. We have yet to have that, and I'm not I've just not, started. You guys just started. Oh, you've yet to have it since since I've been a lion. Ooh. So I don't think that's in the cards for for us. But just know that, that, that players is, love players do love it when you practice in the morning and then they cancel walkthrough in the afternoon. Just for anybody, Coach mm -hmm. Campbell, listening. <laughs> yeah, that is a, a hell of a one. I have two, and I hate to be an attention whore. Um, one is. One is uh, rookie antics in the yeah. sense that like you get into the dog days of camp and then in, in the morning you and a veteran kind of hit a rookie with, hey, I heard today's movie day. I can't, <laughs> practice is going to be canceled. <laughs> and then you kind of just plant that seed. And then slowly but surely during like while the team meeting is taking place before practice, there becomes like a, hey, do you hear? Someone will come yeah, to you yeah. like, do you hear we might have a movie day today? And just watching that rumor spread, knowing good and well, that's not going to happen, but right. you kind of just ruin the team's entire practice. That is fun. Yep. And I you love enjoy kind that. of like ruining stuff, like you ever, salt thing this morning. You ever That's start, a fun joke. <laughs> it's a fun joke. You ever start a fight on purpose to try to get practice canceled? No, uh, like joint you, practice. Yes. You personally, joint practice. There's yeah. been a couple. You kind of a couple push and shoves, and you're just hoping that things get so out of hand that they're like, "We're done." <laughs> We're done. Guys in the weight room, get a pump, and you're like, "Yeah, that's, that's really going to hurt my feelings." Great, Getting a pump right now. Yeah. My other shout out is cloud coverage. Oh yeah, we've had Ooh, it. Anytime That's a good you get one. outside and it's, it's like in the 80s. dog days, you're in the high 80s. That's a good yeah. one. And then all of a sudden, clouds just start rolling through, and then you have a nice breeze during practice. Like that is a godsend. We've had two of those in a row now, and it's been we don't we're not counting on them. They're, 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 this heat's coming, the humidity's coming, but we've had two two good ones. The weather what's, what's today was nice, one? perfect. Kind of spoiled yeah, that good. first cold water on a hot day. I love how we're just doing the like little luxuries of shout life. For shout outs. Yeah, let's keep it going. What's that? The salt. Oh, yeah. I think it's a fun prank that kind of lives. And I'm a nasty boy. But when you're at a... Taylor's, we were at breakfast today, and Taylor like unscrewed the salt to leave it for whoever the next person was. But not for any of the boys, like any of the friends. It was just for whoever was going to show up next to the In our cafeteria? No, no. no that would have been funny too, oh. though. <laughs> yeah. That would have been funny. Is that seeing you're well, laughing? Well, yeah, because you're around training camp like you're around the fellas. But we're talking just, right. you know, another family. That's oh no, that's not good. It. No, that's yeah, the way you no. it's the way you framed it. No, if you're just, I doing think it it's is, funny. Though. If you're I just doing it, funny. if you're just doing it like to leave some chaos behind you, that's not cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I you're doing it to your wrong. buddy, yeah, it's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how we were explaining it. No, you guys are right. <laughs> but it reminded me because it's like the same same thing. You're I almost did it. To, I almost did it to you at lunch. With what though? The ketchup. Could have been that. JP and I were in the corner kind of talking about the salt thing. And then everyone was so hangry, I thought, it's just going to ruin everything. Shout out, no free shout out. Go ahead. When you get a small enough injury that you know it's not that bad, <laughs> but you get to miss a day of practice. Hey, is that not? I, I've never had one of those, but yeah, I can see I can see that being up your alley. Quarterback is different. They get to wear the jersey. They get to wear the jersey. I can see that being up your alley, though. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Shout out, no free shout out. Coach pulling you to the side and being like, we're going to temper a couple of reps for you today. <laughs> Shout out, Novi! Shout out! You're in the preseason game. You think you're playing, and coach is like, "Hey, take your pants." Ooh, off. That's, a good one. that's the best I've one. That, I've had that, that is the best. I like one. a surprise yes. one too. Yeah. Yes, that's a good one. God, dude! Shout out, Novi! Shout out when you're done playing in a preseason game, and the boys have the pads up, and you're just eating the seeds, and you have the best seats in the house to watch I know, football games. But you kind of have to sneak it because you don't or, want to disrespect what's happening out there. No, you're just you're chatting with the boys, and you're watching. You got the bucket hat on. The guys come <laughs> yeah, off, and you're for like, hey, sure. Listen. I'm with you. I'm when with that the, guy comes, you just got to get a little more vertical. You're fine. The yeah. home preseason game at one o'clock is yes. a good one. Yes, the home preseason. Pre like games. we have one of those this year. I think it's the last one. That's the good one. Hot That's dogs at halftime. Yeah, I mean, crustables. You not a hot dog guy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't want to. You like, not a glizzy? You not no, a, I like hot dogs. You don't but like, glizzies? I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Like while the right. guys are that's why yeah, you, go in the, you go in the equipment room. Right, 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 I'm saying right, right. halftime, you go back to the equipment room. Yeah, you're hiding. You guys have some hot dogs. Yeah, you're hiding it. And it's gone. Yeah. yeah. Were you doing that? What do you mean? 
Yeah, well, you bad hang on, time out, time out. Hang on, no, 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 you're, bad, is, you're a bad teammate. No, no, no hang on, hang on, hang on. I want to know what he means by the question. He could be <laughs> meaning like, did you get off time during your preseason game? Is that what you meant, you motherfucker, dude? <laughs> oh, no. Like, yeah, I had a couple of years there where I didn't get in some preseason games now. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm nice kidding. Nice no, job, I, though. No, That's I do, great I do, I do like the hot dogs. All right, good. Yeah. The Kuhlman guys hook you up. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. Man. Hey, why Cal? Uh, well, I grew up in the Bay. Did nobody else offer you? I only had three offers. Fresno was, State? It was Cal, it was Fresno State, and Boise State at four, and Washington State. And uh, both my parents went to Cal. So I grew up a Cal fan, and yeah, it was kind of the only option I had that was good academics, I guess, is yeah. the best way to put it. Hey. Were you like a, a small, lankier kid that just didn't have the size I was. yet? Yeah, I was. I was I was like, shit, I was like 185 pounds, played as a true freshman there, and was like so skinny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great place. Berkeley's awesome. It is cool. Never yeah. been. It's gorgeous out there, Never man. Never been. Golden Bears. Yeah. There you go. Extinct. Um ACC. Cal Bears. They're in the ACC now? Yeah. Are Try, they really? Trying to play Miami and North Carolina. That kind of sucks, right? That's, that's, a that's a lot tough. of flying. It's a lot of flying. That's a lot of flying. Tough. You, you guys, guys you guys just get to stick in the Big Ten and just keep on rolling on. All these other guys had to move. When you run the country, brother, you do what you want. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Hey, speaking of. <laughs> You're in a state that's very divided from a college standpoint. Who do you side with, Michigan or Michigan, Michigan. State? Michigan, yeah. No, and that was not just because you're sitting here. Yeah, and I, I it's just because where I live and nearby here, it's a lot of a lot of Michigan alum. Yeah, and so I don't, I, I really don't know many Michigan State alum personally. There's not a whole bunch of them. I'll be honest with you. They don't, gra- they don't graduate. It's not. Have you they usually uh, drop out? <laughs> you got a relationship with Eminem? Um, I've, I've. I met him once here at practice and then saw him at the draft night and that's about it. But yeah, he's been great to me. You're more of a kid rock guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, kid's great. <laughs> Dude, I'm not that. No, kid's great. I, I don't have, a, I, I have a, uh, have, I have this similar relationship with both of them. I've yeah. chatted a couple of times. Do you have the phone numbers? Uh, no. Have All you right. listened to the new album? Eminem? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. Favorite song. I like it. Um, I think it's called Bad. A yeah. uh, bad one? Yeah, bad one. Yeah. yeah, that one, yeah. That's a good one. That's yeah. a solid one. Um, real quick, the skit you did with those uh, semi-pro kids. Yeah. We're getting the fingers. Oh, we are? Just say, we can get this one. We get, we get this one off? Yeah, we can get this one We're off. good, yeah. We get this one off. How hard was it for you to buy into that and not just tell everybody that, hey, was I'm a professional football player? Yeah, dude, it was crazy. Like, they, uh, the, the whole week they had set cameras there to mm-hmm. try to, like, tell them they were on, like, some sort of last chance you, I guess. And so it was, it was, they were fake cameras. So then when I showed up, it wasn't like all of a sudden there was cameras and yeah, I get there and, and I, I thought, to be honest, I thought like it was going to get sniffed out quicker, but I had a bunch of like stuff on my face and, um, a couple of kids did like kind of figure it out pretty quickly, but most of them didn't. And, and the best was messing around with the quarterbacks because that's kind of like the comments that I was giving them is comments I've received. Yeah. Like, are you, are you the punter? Like, are you, oh, you know, that's why they brought me here, like from like transfers or whatnot. Yeah. And so it was really easy to act out because it was all stuff I've kind of experienced and it was funny. It was, it was good. It was an elite, it was an elite, uh, you did a good job. Thank you. Did a very nice job. We appreciate you coming on. I know we're getting, Thank you. we're getting the finger. We're getting the finger. Just wow. let you know you are on the radar to make, the, to make the team this year. Thank you. Appreciate that. The one at the end of the year. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. you know what's coming. Thank you. Yeah. It's fun. The all white team. <laughs> Bustin' with the boys. Subscribe. <laughs>